The Incredible Hulk will not be presented this evening. Welcome, everybody, and uh, it is Wednesday once again. It's Wednesday once more. Happy hump day, hump day, everybody. Just want to say hello around the horn. Ooh. Let's go. Bing him to my, uh, I guess he looks like he's on my left on TV. I guess. I'm going left, yeah. All right, Bingham, how are you today? You lefty bastard. How do you do? I'm fine. Very good. Joe? I am exhausted, but I am here. Krellbar? <coughs> and Matt. Hey guys, good to be Welcome. back. All right, um, Jables, it's great that you're here. Let me discuss how, what I was talking with Joe and Krell before you got here. Okay. I've been going to the gym, and my 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 Spotify has been playing some strange songs that weren't in my ears before. Okay, one of which is the new Judas Priest album. Oh, okay. Did you add that in there? No, you didn't. No, I don't use Spotify. Oh. I use Apple Music. I think I like tried your list like once, but I, I'm an oh, Apple man, Music Oh, man, they've been changing my whole music around, and now it's playing all of the songs, and somehow that album is in my mix, and it's excellent. Yeah, it's shockingly good. It makes no sense. Well, you know, first of all, Rick, Ricky Faulkner is a great Ricky, player, yeah, and Ricky I could definitely Faulkner. tell his playing over the other playing. The other thing was that um, Halford's not doing the stupid high voice. He's keeping it like old school. And I only think the high voice that Halford did only sound good in one song, and that song is Screaming for Vengeance. Mm. All that painkiller shit, I don't need it. Yeah. yeah. It it became like a clown show. Um. Yeah, but anyways, guys, the album's excellent. It also started playing some Def Leppard stuff from the first album, more of the first album that I haven't listened to over ad nauseum. And that first album is definitely Def Leppard's best record on yeah. through the night. Yeah, and the second one's their second best. <laughs> and that, I agree. Not, what? Which one has the tune "Let It Go"? Second. The second album. The second album. Okay, yeah. Yeah, "Let It Go," "Bring It On the Heartbreak." Uh, that riff, the intro riff. And Saturday! Let it go. It's Is monster. Saturday on that one? Yeah. Know. Dude, I saw them with their original guitar player, Pete Willis, open for Ozzy. And, man, the crowd was just not into them. I mean, they were really? like, they were going, Ozzy, Ozzy. <laughs> and then their Def Lever was kind of like, I mean, they played and sounded great, but they just not were getting a warm reception. That's funny. Um. Yeah, that is funny. You know what? Uh, so I, I just finished giving a lesson, and we were talking about Aerosmith in my lesson. Wait. And then a question came up. What do you guys think is the best Aerosmith, Aerosmith song that exemplifies the band? Like, mm. 
And I got to hmm. say, like, it's a song for me, not on maybe one of their most loved albums, but definitely one of the early albums. Anybody? What's well, I, tell you, I can tell you what my favorite song is. Yeah, what is I, your favorite song? Even, even as a kid, my favorite song was Back in the Saddle. Oh, it's brilliant. I, I love brilliant that groove. Song. Brilliant. Agreed. Um, I never thought of a name. I, I, was, I was on mute the whole time. <laughs> uh, I said Back in the Saddle before Joe did. Oh, really? Read my lips. Uh, no new taxes. Um, <laughs> back in the saddle. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I think rocks. If you could see in early Aerosmith, the sign that the album rocks could be made, it would be by looking at the second album and my favorite song from Aerosmith, which is on that second album. Get your wings. Uh, I like uh, SOS too bad. Guess. Oh, really? <laughs> That's my favorite. I thought you were going to say like Seasons of Wither or something. Like oh, no. Stagecoach yeah, Lee. Ah, well, Glass play. Body. To me, it reminds me of Licking a Promise, but it has way more aggression and much better hook. I also love Kings and Queens. I think Kings and Queens mm. is more of their stairway to heaven than Dream On is. See, I'm, a, I'm more of a Toys in the Attic fan. See, now that's my number two. I was wrestling with two of them. Yeah. And yeah, the song see, and the song "Toys in the Attic" kind of exemplifies them to me because that's like yeah. one of the first things I heard from them. Yeah, on that album, I really like. Well, I love "You See Me Crying." I love um, "Baby I'm a Dreamer." What's that song called? Oh, uh, no oh, uh, no surprise. No, no, He's, no it's on "Toys in the Attic." Mm. Oh, why no more? No, no, more, more, no, no more, more, no more, yeah. no more, no more. Yeah, no more, no more. That's a great oh, song. Sound the same. That's a great, great. Song. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's my be- favorite album. I think. Uh, really? Yeah. See, I like rocks, and I like those are my top two. Album. And then Night in the Ruts is probably number three. Night in the Ruts is great. It's a great album. Yeah, I love I, the I, song I, Mia. Hush mm. by my baby. How do you feel about the cover? Ooh. Walking in the sand. But just you know, uh, there's a couple of covers on that album. Yeah, the the slide on Chiquita is cool, and then the, oh, you know, Chiquita, uh, that's a great riff. And then uh, you know, um, let's chip away at the stone. What album's that on? That's on. It's not on an album. Oh, it's not. It, it is, but I think it's it on a, greatest hits. I thought it. Well, uh, I think it was on. Uh, wasn't it on a live album? Like, didn't it? Wasn't didn't yeah. It's have, on. It's on. It's on live bootleg. Yeah, it's on bootleg. But then they released the recorded version, which they never released. But they had done it when before they got, you know, when they were doing it, mm-hmm. and it went on a greatest hits album. But it's not on any of the well, albums. Okay. Mm-hmm. They've only had one number one hit. Can you say? T- t- yeah, the Armageddon is? theme. No, never gonna miss a thing. Yeah, don't and I don't want to miss a thing. That's another another song. one of my favorite that's, songs. That's real was always- Aerosmith right there. See, that's Hero Smith I can do without. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Anything the Catalina Anything Wine from, Mixer. From we only do 80s Hero Smith. That's uh, right. The, the, I mean, it's terrible like to say it. Cook your wife out of here. Ter- terrible. Another great song, a big 10 inch record. Hysterical. It's hysterical. I never really liked it that much. I never dug it. I didn't, I didn't, I don't like the blues stuff. So much. Well, it's terrible to yeah, say. I, but I never liked best, Mama Ken either. So. Their best stuff was when they were on drugs, though. They didn't, yeah. you know. <laughs> and it's sad to say because after they cleaned up, they suck. Yeah, I mean, you know what's know funny is people. A, I don't know if I have a favorite. I'm trying to sit here and decide. Like I, well, I really, I is my, mine's a what? toss up between nobody's fault and back Ooh. in the saddle. Both on back rocks. in the saddle. Just it's it's pretty much a perfect song. Mm. Yeah, um, Last Child's good too. Is so good. Last Child's oh, great. Last Child is good. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny you know is people story... talk about Toys in the Attic, but the two huge songs from that album are so fantastic and overplayed is Walk and, This Way and Sweet, and Sweet Emotion. Emotion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Overplayed, great songs, but overplayed, still, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're still great. Still great songs. Yeah. You heard that story from their, their big drug years when... Uh, there's a song on the radio, 
And Steven Tyler says to Joe Perry, we got to write a song like that. And Joe Perry goes, that's us, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Have another line. J -j jaded. Da -da -da. I love Jaded. Jaded is like a 2000 song, isn't it? It's like Honkin' for Bobo or something. I remember when that came out, I was living in Venice Beach. Honkin' for Bobo? What the fuck does that mean? I was playing with a girl singer. You guys know, uh, well, Bingham, you know Krista? Yeah. I was I was playing with her, and I was constantly singing Jaded. And finally one day she goes, you know, that's a song. I, I thought you were always just saying that. I had no idea it was a song of the radio. Uh. <laughs> Jaded. Uh, I the like the first the Joe album? Perry project. The, oh, the, the first lyrics Joe Perry. In, uh, the lyrics in Walk This Way are a little fucked up. Yeah. The yeah, first yeah it's all the, about... I met the, a cheerleader, a real the, young bleeder. Oh, my God. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a different time. Then. Yeah. It was uh, a Cold different Roses time. is asking me about the first two Joe the Perry... Air. About the first two Joe Perry project records. And I just want to tell you guys a really quick story. A couple of years ago, I'm playing for a blues band on Sundays. And um, I get a phone call and they say, this Sunday, we're having a special guest. Charlie Farron is coming on. From Farron. Charlie Farron wants to do four songs. And we think you'd be the bass player for him. So I said, well, I'll do it. You know, but... I get to pick the songs. So they were like, what? I said, I'll do it, but I want to pick the songs. So Charlie Farron, I guess, wanted to do like one or two songs in particular. And they said, well, what, do you, what did you want? I said, we got to do Listen to the Rock, which is Joe Perry project that he sang on, and East Coast, West Coast, and the other two songs you can pick, I don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they agreed. I learn the songs. I go do the gig. We have a great show. We do four songs for this at this, in the middle of this show. And afterwards, I'm talking to Charlie Farron, and he says to me, "Hey, you know, is it was it true you, you didn't want to play with me unless you got to pick the songs?" I said, "Listen, if I tell people I'm playing with Charlie Farron, the first thing they're going to say is, did you do East Coast West Coast? Did you do Listen to the Rock? There's no way in hell I'm saying no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're doing them." Mm -hmm. He he thought it was the funniest thing he ever heard. Mm -hmm. He's like, that's hysterical. I'm like, I gotta do those tunes. I want to listen to the rock and roller. Uh, then he first, told me a funny yeah. story. He was at a Red Sox game, and this woman, this girl, he says, this beautiful girl, probably like 20 years old, is like, oh my god, mom, we gotta get a picture with this guy. So they asked someone else to take the picture of this of this girl with in her mother. With Charlie Farron. So the mother says, who is he? She goes, I don't know his name, but he's on uh, community auditions. He's a judge. <laughs> For those in Massachusetts would yeah. know, For the rest of the world, community <laughs> auditions is like a local, used to be on BZ Channel 4, um, like a local audition show, like American Idol for like local Massachusetts people. Yeah. It, so it has it was the usually, air of a cable access show, basically, before we had cable. And it was usually awful. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Dave like, Maynard thought he could sing. And my father going back, got on. Going back to Charlie Farron, imagine if like someone said to you, if, if an artist said to you, hey, I want you to come do a bunch of songs for me for free, wouldn't you feel you wanted to be able to pick out one song you always wanted to do with that artist? That would be the way to do it, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Right, I mean, I'm like, shit, if anyone, if I know someone that knows Charlie Farron, they're going to be like, oh, you played with Charlie Farron? Yeah, I played bass at a gig. Uh, did you do East Coast, West Coast? You motherfucker, you damn right I did. <laughs> what other tune am I doing? <laughs> I did that, listened to The Rock, and then I had to do some song called Talk Dirty, which was some song he did. Acoust I don't know what I was. I just learned it and did it. Sarah Silverman was on community yep. auditions. That's 100% correct. That That is correct. So, you know those react reaction videos? Yes. Ooh, yeah. I watched one today. So I started watching this one girl, Brit Reacts. Have you guys seen her? She's like this black girl, young, 
but she's listening to like Journey. She's listening to a lot of yacht rock. But she actually will sing along sometimes when she learns the melody and she can sing and she knows music. I find her stuff endearing. Like I think it's, I mean, yeah, I saw she said she loved a Harry Chapin song and I'll forgive her for that. But for the most mm -hmm. part, I think like out of all, now the problem with watching her is the next time you go to your feed, it's going to be every asshole in their mother reacts. My feed is now riddled yeah, with reaction videos. And the only thing I watched was, because I then I got sucked into watching one more, you know the four black guys that usually react to things to get together? I remember what you talking did, about. They did uh, watching Larry Bird videos. Because they never watched Larry Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think I saw that one. <laughs> that highlight reel is freaking right. I'm so entertained by reaction videos, uh, especially like the ones that are done by the black community that are clearly pandering to the white folks to get views. Because you right. watch these videos. You watch one guy react to ACDC back in black. There's 600 other people that in the same time frame are all like, well, we've never heard it either. Here's our reactions. Right. And it's just like, mm, something tells me this isn't quite right. Well, the cool thing about Brit Reacts is she's watching like Hall and Oates, She's Gone, like a live version they did at like on the Grey Whistle or whatever that show was. And fucking Oates' voice is awesome. And and you know, it's like really like R and B. And this is like and so, you know, she she has, I would say, legitimate comments to it. Like I feel like it's not so much pandering as she likes stuff, um, and it's funny that she likes that stuff. But, I mean, it's hard to sit there and say, like, the Hall & Oates songs that she's done aren't great songs. They all are fantastic. And it doesn't seem like she's doing, like, a lot of crappy stuff. Actually, you know what? I stumbled on her once. She did, an, she did a reaction to Norm MacDonald's um, news when he was doing the OJ jokes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a murderer. Don't you know that? <laughs> yeah. No, Ricky, I can't stand the reaction videos, especially, listen, like Brit Reacts is like the only one I'll watch. These other ones always seem to, when they come from a place of authority, like guitar teacher reacts to fuck you, uh, preacher oh. reacts, reverend, fuck off. I don't care what Classical you do for a living. composer reacts. To. Classical that. composer reacts. Oh, fuck yeah. off. Like, I don't care what... Doesn't make yeah. Oh no, that's the worst. Which when the one? vocal coach did when I the uh, first one yeah. I watched, she's watching fucking live Queensrÿche and he's hitting every note except the one to hit, and she's like, "Oh, he's so good." I'm like, "What?" The, every glass pair of glasses in the place is shattering. This guy's making Ethel Merman look like a fucking metal star. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's coming up roses. They always make commentary about like the techniques and say, oh, you can hear his glottal expressions right here. You know, oh, let's carry on. It's like, oh, up. yeah, it's so bad. Dude. The whole really? anytime someone takes a, a thing of authority, guitar teacher watches the Grateful Dead. You don't have to be a guitar teacher to watch the dead and know they suck. They're terrible. I don't give a fuck. Whatever superlative you put in front of your name, if you say the Grateful Dead is good, you'd know nothing. Mm -hmm. They're horrendous. <laughs> I'm gonna do unemployed. And I mean that reacts from the most to, warm. And I'm just place. gonna watch. I'm gonna watch everybody doing mundane jobs, and just sadly be like, oh, I, I do. I would do that. That's gonna be my. My whole video series. <laughs> I'm going to do a whole series of I react to Grateful Dead songs just to get the most hateful comments because the whole show, I'm just going to be like, this sucks. <laughs> this guy calls himself a singer? What beat is the drummer playing to? What pair of hockey gloves does this piano player have on? <laughs> and I would just get the most car. I would be like, you know what? Just keep, because you know how like all these reaction videos always bullshit and they're like, they only want people to comment because that gives them more views. So they're always like, is is this guy from New York? Tell me in the comments if you know where right. he's from. What? Right. Does, is this guy, is he wearing a hairpiece? In the comments, let me know what you think. Type hairpiece if you think it's, it's like, are you fucking kidding me? How about I don't type anything and you just shut the fuck up? 
<laughs> it's like the people that uh, if you guys ever watch the quartering he's a news thing on, yeah. on YouTube yeah no. okay I like his videos I don't like him to keep telling me to subscribe in the first two seconds and also coffee brand coffee I don't care I know you own it have it on have it at the end of your videos but in the middle of your videos stop pushing coffee brand coffee I can't taste it. I, I don't know what it's going to be like. So what? I'm going to commit to a case of this coffee because I like your show. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I cut out um, all the ads. I yeah. I, I need that. to start a whole new reaction channel. Dave reacts to Bob Dylan. Did you ever? Um, did you ever watch the um, any of the videos of the tribal people reacting or trying different foods? Oh yeah. You mean the, I yeah. love them. Well, it, yeah, the, I like the guy with the big headpiece thing on his head. Yeah, eating the Big Mac. There's <laughs> have chicken <laughs> McNuggets. I haven't seen <laughs> yet. Uh, I put it in my watch later list. It's a tribal people react to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> like, oh, I gotta, I gotta watch that one. Yeah, and there was like another the one. Beat. The first reaction video I ever liked was this girl. I think she's in like Finland or something, and she's a classically trained flute player, and she was reacting to Jethro Tull. And just watching her mind be blown by seeing the way that you know Ian Anderson plays the flute, Runs she's around. like, "No, you can't do that." And I'm like, "He just fucking did it." And you yeah, kind of get in there on one leg. How, how good he is, too. Yeah. <laughs> a classical flute player comments on a guy that's been playing the flutes before thousands of years before she was born. <laughs> oh yeah, decades, decades. I really don't mind if I shit this one out. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I love Jethro Tull. I'll tell you right now, and, and Johnny Kramer knows it, if anybody knows it, the best song they ever did was Teacher. Oh, hey, yeah. man, what's the plan? What was that you said? Ba -na 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 -na. Ba -na -na -na. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's oh, a yeah, yeah, tune. yeah. That is. Well, the storm was coming. Do -dum, do -dum. <laughs> there must be another way. He said, My name's the teacher. <laughs> that is what I call myself. Hey, man, what's the plan? What was that you said? That's the greatest tune. Every yeah, time that song thing. comes on, I smile. I'm like, It's. It's either that or him 43. Is that what it's called? Is it 43 or 49? I think it's 43. <laughs> oh, Jesus, save me. Ba -na -na -ba -na. No. 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 Well, Jesus. I think, I think you were mixing up him 43 and funk 49 for a second. Yeah, yeah I always get the number no. wrong because, yeah. And then no, wasn't there a funk are, 48 also? Wrong, you guys got the wrong groove. It's. What was the groove you were just singing? Oh, Thanks. Jesus save me. Bam, bam, bam. bam. Ka -ka -ka. Mama, uh, you got to go. Me, trying to tell me how to live. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I don't listen to they it. Stole it from. Head is like I said. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> Matt caught it right away. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Alice Bowie. So I don't know so if you are familiar, John. If you go down to Sunset Ave... Behind Gold's Gym onto Fourth Street, you will see the house that Cheech and Chong lived in up in smoke. Oh, really? Wait. Oh, yeah. Wait. RL invited, took a picture and sent it to me. Oh, that's wait, wild. Wait, wait. Where is Where it? Is it's it behind. So, you know what Gold's Gym, gym is? Sunset? Yes. Behind Gold's Gym on Third Street between Sunset and Rose is. Um, you know, there's the U-Haul the and there's the gym behind the gym. Go one more street up to 4th, take a left, and right there is the original house of Up in Smoke when they're out there doing beaners. <laughs> That's in the second one, isn't it? it, it, it yeah, next movie. Oh, it's, it's the same house. Yeah. I don't know if they had the house. They didn't have the they house. They didn't have the it. One. They went the straw bed. Yeah, straight, remember DL. in the this first one, the Chong There's was no strawberries in the first one. The first the one, first, the first no, scene no, is in the house. Tom Skerritt. But that's, it's in this Charles house. house. It's, that's it's his house. Whatever. Well, it's the house in the movie that, where they're out front. It's not the same house that they're in next movie. No, no, no. Not even close. Not even close because they were supposed Hold to on. be up in like Malibu or something. What, what does the house look like? Describe the house. When he's 
when he's with his parents, it's an upscale house, like up very in the upscale, hills. has nice. Cars. Oh, not that next house. Next movie, next right. movie, it's a rundown ass fucking house. Yeah. And, okay, uh, that's the house. Playing loud guitar. And... That's the house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah it's it's next okay, movie, yeah, that's the one. Sorry, not up in smoke. Next movie. Yeah, that's that's the house on on Sunset Ave. In fact, uh, Mexican Americans. Let me see if I still have the picture. My brother had sent it to me in WhatsApp. Let me just see if I still have it. Oh, I do. Hey, Penny yeah, Matt, I'm going to send you this. And um, tell me if this is what house this is, what movie this was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Cold Roses Remember Strawberry. Tom Skerritt. In the first All right, so you just got it. The house in uh, – did you uh, text it? Yeah. It'll, you, okay. Your phone should make a noise any second. Yeah, so far, no. Um, yeah, because the, the one in the second one was where he had the bike in the living room and had the, yeah, the pipe, just, pipe going out the window all over the guy's roses. Flowers. What happened to the original picture, though? Cheech that, takes a piss out looks, of the window. That looks like a Venice Santa Monica place. Oh, yeah, 334. So it's got to be – so now – Google 334 4th Street, Venice. 334 4th Street. You're you're waiting on me oh. to do it? Okay, oh, no, there green, it is in Redfin. It's, it's, it's right now. there. There's the house. It's green now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they yeah, want $2 that. million for this fucking thing? Dude, it's good. <laughs> it's in that zone. It's in that beach zone. And not only that, it has the provenance of being yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Oh, it says it right here. No, see, it says Up in Smoke. This classic yep. Venice Victorian featured in Cheech and Chong's well, iconic movie, Up in Smoke. They made a mistake, too. Yeah. They're a realtor. You, okay, if it was in Up in Smoke, you tell me which scene it was in. Well, isn't what's the, what, the picture that I sent you? What's, mm -hmm. What movie is that from? That looks like look next at the movie. Look at the picture I sent you. Movie. It looks like next movie. See, I think that's the. No, at the beginning of uh, Up in Smoke, it's Strother Martin plays his father. They're right. they're an upscale family and right, and they're, they're living him in a out very of the house. upscale house. Yeah, and he's, he's oh, see, then he's got like these Mexican guys to the right of the picture. Matt, look look close. Yeah. Zoom in on those. Mm hmm. Rel says, what's yeah. going on, DL? Strawberry's house is in Pasadena, not Chong. Cheech's house is in Venice. This is okay. Rel speaking now. Yeah. Okay. I That looks Wasn't like... Strawberry he, his cousin or something? No, just a friend, I think. That does look like the outfit he was wearing in the first movie. Yeah, that's what I, I think it's like the first scene when he walks outside. Doesn't he take a piss in the corner of the house? Ah, uh, okay. No, I no, that, that's the next movie. Basket. He takes a piss out of the window. Oh, right. That's that's in, the, next, in, next in the first movie, movie, in the laundry in, basket. Right in, in, he, in next movie, though, it uh, the house they're in, they're sharing together. This, I think, is what he's saying is in Up in Smoke. This was the house that Chong, or Cheech comes out of at the beginning yes. of the movie. yes. Because we don't see, Possibly. we see Chong, yeah. we see Chong and Strother Martin. But do you remember how you first see Cheech? I think it's probably coming out of this house. Cheech yeah. wakes up in, on the sofa yeah. or something in the house, takes a piss into a laundry basket, and then yeah. walks to the front right, door. Right, 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 right. That's it. Yeah, because yeah, that is the so, outfit. Yeah, it probably was in yeah. that movie too. Then. Well, I don't know if it's the next movie because the one they had the next movie they shared together, and that's where he had the motorcycle and the guitar shit and all that. Right, and like, ah, ah, ah. right, right. Anyways, I think it's pretty nice. funny because how many times have we been by that house? Now you have to understand, I lived on Fourth Street at the top of the hill on the mm. Santa Monica side. Right, once you cross, uh, mm -hmm. once you get really close to Marine, it becomes Santa Monica. But that literally, I must have walked by that house a thousand times. Also, Matt, I don't know if you know, if you're on Fourth Street at Marine and you walk towards Hill, uh, hill mm -hmm. like about. A hundred yards on the left is the original original apartment complex of Three's Company in the beginning. Oh, really? No, I didn't know that. 
<laughs> I know it's crazy. I know you you can go see so many of those things in LA. You can go see the Brady Bunch house or the or the area where they made Halloween. You know that whole. Yeah, I was gonna say. They, yes, it is. I know Halloween. RL. That's what I said. One building in. It's uh yeah thirty one eleven. But yeah, too funny. It's time but anyways. To shoot the moon. Um, I need to go on a I need to go on a road trip and see all of the locations where they filmed the A Team episodes. It's literally all. Oh yeah, well you know what's Santa Clarita probably. I'll tell you what's. That's are you guys, are, are, on, Matt? Are you a Fletch fan at all? Uh, of the first one. There's a guy who does all the locations all over Los Angeles. A Fletch, you'll get a huge kick out of it. Oh yeah. You know, like um, what, what's what's the hotel that's on Second Street over there by um, <coughs> Santa Monica? The Fa the Fairmont, Marmont. No. You know, it's right on Ocean Ave in the corner. Hey, There's at the Fairmont Hotel. By Shay J. Further area? down, all the way down to Wilshire. Oh, hotel. Mm -hmm. RL, what was the name of that hotel? The Georgian. No, the Georgian's on Ocean. Okay. This one, you actually turn on Wilshire, and then you have to take a left once you're on Wilshire. Oh, I don't know what that one was. I think it's called the Fairmont. It's like a Sheridan Fairmont or something. Fairmont mm -hmm. Hotel. Could be anything. Anyways, oh, it is the Fairmont, RL, Fairmont, RL says. So when he goes in the side and that guy, Fred, you know, it's good to see. You know, when, when he goes in and the police are chasing him, it's right there. Oh, yeah. Right on Second Street. Oh, it's fucking gold. And they go through like where his apartment was in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. And then like they show like how they're driving down the street in the car chase scene. And one scene they're in like Hancock Park. The next corner he flips it, he's in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. They're like just how like disjointed all like the editing is. Well, remember, I, I never really watched the movies, but the Speed movie was like the bus scene. There's like right, in, right, right down from the firehouse Main yeah. Street. There's like the clown from Cuckoo yeah. or whatever. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> We're driving that fast down fucking, you know, Main Street. In Santa Monica. Well, the blue, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was that bus, right? That's where the bus blew up. Mm -hmm. Right. That's where they had that explosion of the bus right out in uh, front. I don't he know. went in to buy a muffin at the firehouse. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, crazy. Yeah, it's pretty. But anyways, I thought that was funny that those houses were there, and um, and you can go see them. I mean, I remember when when I used to go by the uh, uh, Nicole Simpson's house. Oh shit, dude! That was ninety four. That was at the end of my street. Oh, you lived over there? Oh, yes, yeah. you did. I remember now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dave drove the Bronco. I remember now. Dude, I remember everything. The first place I lived was right on the corner of Bundy and Montana. Nicole? And the guy that lived above me was, I saw him one night. I was watching an E! True Hollywood story on the uh, O.J. Simpson thing. And my fucking guy upstairs is on the show. <laughs> he oh, that's testified. hilarious. He testified at the trial. He was a total dick and he got evicted. And I about kicked oh, that's hilarious. But Let me just say this. If anyone thinks OJ didn't do it, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, man. If the glove don't fit, you might. Well, I will out. say that the prosecution fucked it up to a point where they couldn't find him guilty. That's the Who whole the hell thing. told you to tell her to put the bra on? That's my yeah, favorite. My caddy. Oh, you love Jack. Uh, he's the best. And the caddy was <laughs> the quark from uh, Deep Space Nine. Uh, Armin, Armin really? Shimmerman. Yeah, Armin Shimmerman. Oh, I didn't know that. Armin Shimmerman. What about him? He he was on Seinfeld. He was uh, the caddy. Oh, well, he's been on a lot of shit. Oh, my God. I had a unique experience yesterday. Go on. You want to hear something nuts? Yes. I get a knock at my door, and I go, hang on a second. You. I'm sitting at my sitting at my table soldering stuff like an idiot, and I go, hang on a second, and I open my door expecting it to be this kid that lives upstairs just coming down to bug my kid, and it's not. It's a UPS, or not a UPS, but an Amazon delivery person with nothing but a super small package, just a book. Here's where it gets interesting. 99% of the time, 
they just throw whatever you order at your doorstep and leave. You never get a knock. You never know. For some reason, she knocks. I open the door. And she is absolutely stunningly beautiful. And I'm wow. like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, think of this, this has got to be a prank. She's gorgeous. And she's an Amazon delivery driver. I'm like, whatever. But then, you know, this is why now I'm now I've, I found my soulmate and I'm in love. And I had to divorce my wife who's over there listening to me say this. Um, <laughs> she delivered. She delivered this to me, which means I now love her. Ah, wait, what see is that? that? She knew it was important, so instead of throwing it down, she goes, I'm going to knock on the door for this one. And it's this kismet. Guy, it's the one time the doorbell really rang when your pants it. weren't around your ankles. Oh, they were. They were. So, okay. I, I pulled them up. I hobbled over to okay. the door. Hang on a second. I said I'll be right there. Uh, so, have you guys, is anyone here besides me still watching South Park? Occasionally. Not Have enough. you seen the chat, GP, the chat GPT oh, episode? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It's it awesome. is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it. I don't know how those guys still make gold. I know. When Bebe and Clyde are texting, uh -huh. it's fucking gold. Bingham, yeah. I just say you got to watch it. It's called Deep Something. What's it called? Deep um, the episode. Oh, I don't remember. I'm just Deep telling you, Space I watched that Deep episode. And what is it? No. Deep Space Nine. Oh, oh. No, it's called like Deep. If anyone knows the name of that episode of South Park with Chat GPT, it is. I got it Paramount is, TV. Let me look it up. Yeah, it it's, is it's so genius. good. Yeah. The way he's got this shit going with the girls. <laughs> oh, not only that, that, but then when Garrison is uh, is privy to what's going on and how he can't, like you, he uses it bastard. a different way. <laughs> he it's finds so he's, good. He's using it and he finds out he's been getting it used on him for so. <laughs> it is so good. Yeah. Like when, when he defends the kids at first. <laughs> oh, it's I, yeah. literally. I was crying. I'm like, these guys are still making funny shit. Oh yeah, it's unbelievable. Have you seen the Christopher Reeve, uh, the or well the one where they're uh, the two uh, cripple kids tried to oh, start yeah. a game called the Crips? Yeah. Oh, that's that an was an older one. one. Is that, yeah, yeah, that's a great one. But that the fuck the Christopher Reeve breaking the and <laughs> throwing the fetuses. Away. Yeah, yeah. The well, that was the yeah. uh, stem cell one. Stem cell right. one. Yeah. Oh, that's an old yeah. one. Yeah, an old one. Yeah, but it's great. That show's been on for almost thirty years. Yeah, ninety six, I believe. And it's hard yeah. to tell old ones from new ones just because the animation never changes. Deep right. learning. Except I think what, what, deep learning. Deep learning. Oh, it's so fantastic. It is so good. And Cartman is so good in it. It's the fourth episode of the twenty sixth season. The three hundred and twenty third yeah. episode. It premiered March eighth of twenty twenty three. The episode, which parodies the use of the artificial intelligence chatbot ChatGPT, which is credited as a co-writer for the episode, for yes, text it is, yeah. sent as upon fourth grader Stan Marsh, who comes to rely on the software for writing both school essays and romantic texts to his girlfriend, Wendy Testerberger, bringing him into conflict with her, his classmates, and school officials. <laughs> All right, it's unreal. It really is is it's such a good episode. That's funny. Yeah. It is and when when the kid with the glasses who like he never seen him before, but he has to take a piss and they're all in it, and Cartman's yelling at everybody. And they all stop so this kid can go take a piss and they just watch it. This piss. And it's like a minute or two, and I'm like, what the hell am I watching here? They're just waiting. I didn't see the whole thing, but the one where uh, Cartman is is so happy about the COVID shit and the uh, social distancing, and he's got the stick, and he's making sure even his mom is six feet away all the time and shit. Yeah, That's I mean cool. these guys are they're just funny. Oh, really? Yeah, I watched. Uh, I haven't seen it in a million years, but I watched that movie Basketball over the weekend. Oh God! It's been a long still, time. I think it's I watched that half of that terrible. when I was half asleep once. It's yeah. all yeah. It's terrible, but it's also very funny. Orgasmo's better. Yeah. Orga yeah. <laughs> Chota yeah. boy, yeah. Best, the yeah. bestest team America. 
I can't Kingdom watch or, I can't watch Orgasmo or whatever it's called around uh, with kids wandering around though. <laughs> right, a little, a little a little too colorful. Yeah, how are you gonna watch Team America too? Right. I know. Oh, yeah, if no you way. could promise to me you're never gonna die, I would make love to you right now. I am never going <laughs> to die. <laughs> Why is everyone so fucking stupid? Uh, <laughs> fucking God, that movie that. came out in like what 2004 or something. Team America. Yeah. I think a little yeah, before so. that, maybe. Eric Baldwin. Well, let's see. The movie was uh, the South Park movie was two uh, thousand. So it was after that. So yeah. Team America. America. Yeah, the South Park movie was like ninety eight. Yeah, ninety eight. Nice. Well, I thought it was nine. I thought it was yeah, that's somewhere. It is crazy to think that that's still on. Yeah. Pretty amazing. So, uh, you know what, you guys, you guys, I don't know if you're on Instagram, but you guys know what reels are. Like, there's, they have them on Facebook. Oh, we're going to talk about that in a second. And Inst- so there was this girl, and she's like, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow is really hurting people by telling her, her, telling them her diet. It is so unhealthy. And then it's like, Gwyneth Paltrow's like, yeah, I, I don't eat breakfast. I have, um, I have bone broth in the afternoon, and then at night I eat a paleo meal. She's eating healthier than ninety nine percent of the population, and this nutritionist again, another one oh, taking a place that. of I'm an expert. This nutritionist is like, well, you're not going to get cancer or fucking type two diabetes that way. Go back to eating the way everyone's telling you to. <laughs> ah, fucking dick bags, I swear yeah. to God. All right, John, let me let me blow you up so you can show everybody your amplification. What? Ooh, oh, hold that thing. Sure. Looks like you're I'm making a marshal there. Look. Yeah, this thing here is. Oh, and by the way, I have a bunch of laundry on the bed over there. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Forgive me, everybody, for my messy room. I just haven't folded my laundry yet because God knows I don't want to. Um, I've just started this one. The power supply is all wired up. That's it. That's nice. all I've done. I've got and the then, filament uh, filament ugh. wires going to all the tubes <laughs> there. That's it. It's it's not done. Let's yet. see the top this of it. Is, there we go. We, so we got we got two going uh, to be transformers. A... Is that a choke? What is that? No, that's no, the transformer. transformer. Power transformer, output transformer. Yeah. This is going to be a 18 watt, like a 1974X, but with um uh Instead of doing, you know how a 74X is going to be an 18-watt Marshall with one side and then an, an, another side that's the same, but it has tremolo on it? Mm-hmm. So you got like plexi channel, plexi channel with tremolo. That's what it, it normally is. This one, I'm building it to be a plexi side and then a JCM 800 side. And uh, I'm going to make it channel nice. switch between the two of them where are you getting these parts um, are you, is it a kit this this one starts as a kit kind of like my first one did but i have to go way off page to get it done um i only buy this as a kit because i don't have to source a hundred different parts i can just mm. buy the kit save myself a couple of hours worth of that admin work and mm. then the only thing i have to do separately is buy the other parts that i need that i know i need which right, is not mod that parts. right so like for the mods yeah i'm gonna be doing like i need to buy i need to buy another quarter inch jack for the foot switch to go into i need to buy a relay uh, a five volt relay uh, voltage regulator like i like four things i need to buy for that part of it and then the rest of it to build the circuits already in the kit so i don't have to fuck around with it um and I already I already priced out the other side of it is I priced out building this with all of the parts individually and like going through all that work I honestly like you only save like 30 bucks or something on all the parts. Okay. So yeah. my time to me is worth more than oh, yeah. having to spend Plus, a whole day the chassis, sourcing all that get, shit. Yeah. yeah. And most yeah, this of this just makes it so much easier so I just figure screw it. Does it come with a box and a Tolex? It's already no. Tolex, or no? No, 
Yeah, so no, just this the box. So I'll build it. Yeah, I'm gonna go like either V Boutique or um, what's the other one called? Um, Sour Mash. Sour Mash is down by you. It's in Florida. Oh yeah. They make they make cabinetry, but this one I've decided I'm gonna do it as a two twelve combo. On a big giant combo. It's not something most people would get nowadays, but I have noticed over the years that. A 212 sounds better than a 112. Wait, so what's this place you were Hang talking about? Sour, sour Mash? Is that, and you said it's a cabinet place in Florida? Yeah, yeah. Look up Sour Mash Cabs. Well, do they re Tolex cabinets or do they just do? Oh, I, you know, I don't know what their uh, services are beyond um, building stuff. They might. Hmm. I've only ever used them just to, to buy like head shells. Oh, okay. Now, are the head shells coming Tolexed, or do you yeah. have to do it yourself? Okay, no, you buy it. Like, so that. Yeah. No way. That is, like, it's, it's a super messy job. I don't have, I live in an apartment. You know the drill. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah. no way. It looked like, it looked like a, uh, a kidnapper, right? With newspaper clippings all over to type out the fucking ransom note. <laughs> and then on top of that, I would do a bad job. That's, yeah. you know, I just like. I I don't have I don't have the capacity to do like real artistic looking stuff like this. It's not not. I wish I knew a guy that did Tolex because I would totally do a fucking bright yellow Tolex on one of those Marshalls. Well, I'm looking to redo one of my Marshall cabinets or my only Marshall cabinet at the moment. But um, yeah, it's like you can't really find anyone anyone that does it. I mean, it's not like a common thing. Yeah. Uh, If you got it, you got Are you gonna do white? Do white. No, I was going to do orange. Whatever. Oh, orange. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, do something different. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. with you there. Well, I can buy all the all the stuff to do it and, and could probably do oh, it yeah. myself, but it's just you know, such a time-consuming thing. Yeah, but knowing with your attention to detail with like your ability to do all the guitar stuff that you do, you'd, pro- you'd probably pull it off. You could yeah, probably, probably do. Be good well, I, I actually did do it one time a long time ago, but I used the l- wrong adhesive, and it kind of it. I did one in white, and it kind of left bled like an amber color through in spots and stuff. So, but I, the ones oh. I've seen, they use like a dry adhesive where you you put the adhesive on, let it dry, and then it's it's like tack, tacky, tacky. Yeah, so it's not as messy, I don't think, as it maybe once was because this stuff looked like mm. it was pretty easy to use. I know that in the cabinet shop over at boutique amps distribution they use like these like hot rollers Mm -hmm. and it's got like it's got like glue in a trough and then like it feeds through these rollers and they have all their tolexes cut to like you know size and they run it through these rollers and it thinly applies it to the side of the tolex and then these um these ladies all put it together um but yeah they're using like a hot liquid glue oh okay and I think that um, the cabinetry that we use at Bad Cat and that Bogner uses as well, because we use the same shop, it's it's a hot uh, liquid glue as well. Mm. I'm curious what that one you're talking about is, like a dry glue? Yeah, oh, well, it, it goes it goes on wet, and then you let it dry. Mm. And then once it's dry, I think I think you're putting it on both the uh, Tolex and the cabinet, and then they both dry, mm. and then you put them together. Um, I got to look it up. But I got, uh, I found a a place and you go to their website and you can order tons of different like Marshall parts and cabinet parts and Tolexes and shit and corners and handles and all that stuff. Let me see if I can find what it was called, but um, they sell the adhesive there too, or that's where I saw it. Do you guys ever watch Mark Bartel's videos on? Oh, Amplified Parts. Did you mention that? Amplified Parts? No, but I know them. Okay, yeah. If you go to their website, they have that glue. Yeah. What the singer, you, Mark Martell? No, Mark Bartell uh, Bart- is the guy that oh. he started Tone King, um, the amp company, a long time ago, and then he sold that. And now he makes something called Bartell Amplification. But his whole shtick is he does everything top to bottom, and he does it one at a time, and basically builds you know each amplifier is like six grand, crazy money. But you watch his attention to detail on like doing all the cabinet like tolexing and stuff that he does, and it's just like it's insanity. Everything is like perfect. 
I couldn't I couldn't fathom doing it. I wonder if he's any relation to Ron Bartels. I don't know. Or Bartel Harley, Harley Davidson. The, yeah, the Harley Davidson place. I don't know. How about I Paul Bartel coming up. <laughs> Name. Uh, for six hundred bucks, if it's working order, that's a great deal for a Fender Rhodes. Those pianos are awesome. Usually they're about fifteen hundred used. They have a new one now. I think it's called the eight hundred. It is awesome, but I'm sure it's um expensive. Oh, it's Bartel. No, uh Oh, isn't it yeah, but Ron Bartell, I think is his name. The guy that owns the Harley place. My Anyways, God. um 112, 112 combo from Bartell Amplification for the Roseland, which is a basically a, a baseman, pretty much. Fifty one ninety five. He's Ooh, out weird. of his mind. It's yeah, out of his is, tits. This is not for not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's like one of those things. You look at it and you see like all the photography of like the products and every single like lead and every single wire is like hard 90 degrees and super clean and it looks like yeah, it looks like an old high watt on the inside, you know. Yeah, but at the end of the day, how does the amp sound? If it sounds just as good as a two thousand dollar amp or a thousand dollar amp, what are That's you the irony, doing? right? <laughs> yeah. It's like Oh, what's well, this amp? You know, this here we are beautiful. talking about oh, all the Fender parts. Basement. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> now that you're, let me ask you this, John, because now that you're playing with all this electronic stuff, how absurd sure. is it when, when people think like the wood has a factor? <laughs> the wood of the guitar? Um, yeah. Or even the wood of the fucking head of the head. I mean, the wood of a guitar has the exact same effect on the sound as the wood of a, of a head on the cabinet. I mean, on the on the head. Oh, that might be right. Yeah, but the, the speaker, this wood of the speaker cabinet matters. Of course, that's what's breathing and making the sound. But I'm saying the wood of the guitar. Well, the thing I mean, when you sit it, there and you can you can move a you take a capacitor, you move a couple of resistors around, you got a completely different sounding amp. It's all about moving. Are you in. hearing? Are you hearing that rosewood? Fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, unbelievable. Rosewood. The the cabinet Rosewood. makes the biggest difference out of everything, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's I, a, I, you I, know, speakers. it's the final filter. It's the final EQ, and it's a pretty aggressive EQ. Like I think honestly, the I think that's work hand in hand. I think when you listen to like a Mesa, whether it's a combo or the rectifier cabinet, I think a lot of the great sound is that cabinet is a fucking tank. And it sounds like a tank and pushes aggressive air. Well, yeah, the that, cleans still stink. The vintage thirty closed back cabinet you're talking about, like a recto yeah. cab. Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, I have there. Weighs hundred and ten pounds. Yeah, the yeah. cabinet and, itself and, is like not moving at all. It's just the baffle and the speakers because the cabinet's yeah. so goddamn stout. Oh yeah, it's a tank. It's a Sherman yeah. tank, but uh, which is better than a Sherman Hemsley. But the uh, it. The clean still stink. Yeah. Mesa has not made a great clean amp, in my opinion. It's weird. I think I think that the the reason that you generally don't find really good sounding dirties and really good sounding cleans in the same amp is because if you if you're really making one or the other sound better, you're totally changing the speaker and cabinet design. Because right. well, I do think the Shiva does. Yeah. I think the well, Shiva's yeah, kind of I would. I would agree with that. I think the Shiva is probably the best example of that, or the Goldfinger. Yeah. They're both really good, right? But for the most part, you can't. You know, a four twelve closed back cabinet with vintage thirties, it's never going to sound good clean. It's only going to yeah, sound but that okay Shiva's clean. gain stayed sounds fantastic. And by the, the way, she wants to hear more. Incredible. She wants to hear more about the bad cat. Who does? Oh, your kitty. <laughs> you got a kitty cat. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there is such a thing. Like it's there's no perfect answer. Mesa Boogie did that thing a few years ago. You remember the Road King? Yeah. And the Road King had I think somewhere in the neighborhood of like 8,000 switches on it. Yeah, yeah wasn't One the, of the Road things... King just a gl over glorified rectifier? Yeah, but it did a lot of crazy stuff. And so like one of the things that you could do with the Road King that made it unique was you could assign 
the speaker outputs to the channels. So you could literally have one speaker output going to a closed back cabinet, the other speaker output going to an open back cabinet, and then assign the clean channel to go to the open back and the other one to go to the other one. So you could do all this crazy stuff with it. And uh, the dilettante king, dude, the dilettante king, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, who has all this time? I'm gonna make my clean go to the half, this one go to this. Really, why don't you fucking learn to play two chords? <laughs> it's fucking it's bu- truly unbelievable how much, how much shit they stuffed into that amp, yeah. I, I remember hearing from all kinds of guys that I know that worked like doing repairs, like John Tokarski. You know John Tokarski. He was the guy that worked so. at Boogie in Hollywood. Oh, I do know yeah, him. He, he he worked on my he worked on mine. He he yeah. he made my um my effects loop uh series instead of parallel. John would tell you all day long what an absolute fucking nightmare it was to work on Road Kings. Because there oh, was sure. so much so much going on that if you wanted to fix anything, you had to take like everything out of it just to fix it. Yeah. Ask Brad to get the Brad Lindsay would say the same thing, I think. Yeah. Mm. I think Brad's got a video about how bad the, the Roadster was, and the Roadster was like Road King Light. Uh, Quaker Oats guy saying, um, didn't Mesa have a California, tw- tw- uh, the California Tweed have a good clean? I never played that amp. I don't even know if they still make it. But to me, at that point, they're just trying to make a Fender knockoff. And if I 100%. had to guess, it wouldn't be as good as a Fender. And when I say so, a, as a Fender, I mean anyone that's knocking off like a deluxe reverb or a, or a vibe reverb is probably going to be a better amp than Mace's original take on the California Tweed. In my California opinion. Tweed is voiced really strange. Uh, I have a friend that plays one of those live. And I said, I don't know how you play that thing. I tried it, and it sounds terrible. He goes, there's one really? setting that sounds really good. And he goes, and, and the, you just have to know the secret. This is the thing that's annoying about Boogie. It's like everything they make, you have to know the secret to dialing it in. It's like, yeah. why not make an amp that just sounds good wherever the dials are, and then you tweak it. Mm-hmm. But you got to go yeah. hunting around obscure like knob positions to make it work. So apparently the California Tweed sounds really good when you dime the mid range and turn the treble and the bass knob all the way off, I right, haven't tried which was it like, like the, that, but that's what I've heard that's from somebody like the who old, actually is a very Isn't good that the old player. twin trick or the old Princeton trick? Uh, maybe. I don't think. Well, a twin or a Princeton, a Princeton. at least blackface twi- didn't have a mid knob, so it couldn't be that. I think the twin did. Didn't the twin have a mid? I don't think so. I thought the tone stack for those was just bass treble. Maybe not. Maybe they did. I have a but... buddy of mine. He's got a Carvin um combo and again that thing sounds like shit unless you crank the treble and keep the mid and the bass a little under 50 percent yeah and then it sounds great but huh. otherwise it's just a not a good sounding amp neil banbury tried a jakey e. lee signature last weekend lots of money yeah yep yep i know that amp very well it is a 2203 Mashal with uh, an adjustment to the negative feedback and higher gain on the uh, preamp gain stages. That's it. That's right. I mean, it wasn't John Kasha Kills. making Jake E. Lee shit before or, or working with Jake E. Lee. Probably. Well, he used to have that box that he used to run the effects loop all the time. I Rock mod. Jake, Jake E. Lee did, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he used the rock mod. That was made, oh, that was, I think, right. that was Kasha's thing for him. Yeah, John Kasha rock mod. Didn't he have a George yeah, Lynch I, rock mod too? Oh, God. What, what was that <laughs> one? Tidy Roms behind your back? I think, um, <laughs> or did I say that out loud? I thought I was just a joke about that. George's no. playing. Oh, he's terrible. Well, His best that, tone, though, was the ADA oh, preamp. Tony doesn't want you to say bad things about George. Oh, is Tony here? Yeah, he's over uh, there. 20 George 20 Lynch plays everybody. like Warren D. Martini with Tourette's. <laughs> I'm not wrong. He's like playing, all of a sudden he starts doing this. His hands start wagging around. It's like, yeah, that's not really a pleasant vibrato sound, sir. <laughs> 
I'm not. This really makes me sure. think that Joe needs to find a a top guitar players of the '80s list so that we can see, <laughs> so that we can see Frank Black at the top of the fucking list. Oh, you love Black Francis. Oh, oh it'll end up being one of those Rolling Stones lists, right? You're just like, come on. Oh man, Tony <laughs> Fuentes. Tony Fuentes yeah. posted a video that they did. Now, you all have to understand, we've had Tony on the show. Bingham and I have, have uh, had correspondence with him. We love Tony. That guy's very but nice. He's great. He's a sweetheart. But he made a video, and he's like, something about a, a new lesson from George Lynch. And before you go looking for this video, let me warn you, there is no lesson. He's just playing. <laughs> I am not sure. He never goes and explains anything. He, might he be just a... plays a couple of... He might be a bit misguided, Tony. <laughs> just a, maybe just a bit. However, and he is playing like Tony Fuentes with Tourette's. <laughs> um, yeah. So Tony, Tony gave away an Eban JS eight. Oh, Quaker Oats guy knows Tony. That's great. Yeah, everyone should know Tony. <laughs> Quaker Oats guy. Is he still doing the mustache? Or just say Quacker Oats. That was the look. Uh, I haven't seen him with the captain's hat. I think the estate of Daryl Dragon reached out (laughs) to him and said, we own that look. Mm. Daryl Dragon being the captain from Captain and Tennille, everybody. In case that reference you were lost on. um, So Gibson has a guitar that Ryan posted for me in Bingham today called the Theodore. Yeah. Then And... Again, if you looked at the story to the Theodore, it's exactly why I was pissing down the throat of G&L last month. Remember when I said, here's a drawing that Leo made back in 1980 and he never made the guitar and we took it out of the archives and we made it. It's called the piece of shit. (laughs) Gibson did the same thing. They're like, here's a... Here's a sketch. This was a guitar that um what's the guy's name that that made the last call? That Ted McCarty drew in 1957 but they never made it. Um this guitar? I could tell you why they never made it. It's it looks like a fucking tulip. Awful. Yeah. With a fucking worst. explorer headstock. It is the ugliest thing. You may sell two. I bet you they'll what sell you a lot do, more than two, which makes everybody that's listening right now retarded. Yes. And let me just say this. Don't buy that, by re- folks. Come on. What Gibson should do is go in their archives and say, how many people signed up for the warranty on the reverse flying V? Call those people and tell them we have a new <laughs> guitar for them. If they yeah, bought that it. ugly jart-looking guitar. That's horrible. Yeah. Dust they Tiger are certain- customers. Yeah, right. And get every yeah. Dusk Tiger purchaser on, on the line. In a we world have where the you've Theodore. Got, in a world where you've got guitars that look in as good as like the Dusenbergs look. Because, like, man, some of the images... I've been following Dusenberg's Instagram. Everything they post looks incredible. Have you ever like, seen the leather guitar style. they have? The Star Something Outlaw? It's yeah. covered in black leather and it looks like a Gretsch but it's sexier than any fucking Gretsch. Yeah, that's, that's how, how they you improve Everything it. they make looks incredible. That's how you and improve a guitar the design. Fucking, then you got the tulip guitar from Gibson that looks like a, a dog turd. It's yeah, just what awful. you don't do is come out with the Theodore. It, you know what they, looks, they said? Ted McCarty sketched this. Yes, it looks like you took a sketch and made a guitar out of it. Why not get Elbar's somebody to finish that sketch? canceling a Theodore sketch? order right now. <laughs> He's like, oh, these guys. Krell, did you order one? Everything. No, no. <laughs> they're, only, they're only two grand. No, he saw me. He saw oh, me typing. No. You'll they see it. The Dur- f- they come with a right Dura flame lock and a box of wine. Oh, God. Look at the Duesenberg Harmony Unleashed, they call it. Duesenberg Harmony Unleashed. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. They're calling. I'm, I'm, that's just their stupid tagline. My mistake. It's called the Alliance Series. Something for the brothers Landreth, whoever those. Yeah, Sonny are. Landreth and uh, and I don't. Know yeah, it's a great that. looking guitar. That guitar that they came out with looks incredible oh. with those foil pickups. Oh, Joe Walsh stuff. has his own. He has his own one, Joe yeah. Walsh. Yeah, but let's just make a plain mahogany guitar foil in foil pickups. 
in natural and cherry and in TV yellow or whatever it's called. And it's and it's going to be two grand. Look up the Duesenberg Star Player Outlaw. Star Player Outlaw. That's the one covered in leather. The Rob Halford signature? No, no. Does it say? Uh, it's a, it's <laughs> right. Joke. I get it. All right, good. Let's see. Uh, I'm waiting for it to load. Here we go. Uh, da -da -da -da. What was the name Star of that? Outlaw. Oh, there it is. Yeah. What was it called? Oh, well, yeah. That's uh, that's a sexy guitar. Uh, Tom Cochran plays that guitar. The star what? Star, star player, player outlaw. 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 Yeah, that's cool. I Beautiful. love the star player. The star player guitars look great. That like semi hollow Les Paul. Slightly bigger than a Les Paul, but not much. That a real it, big be uh yeah, I'd, no, the Duesenberg uh vibro, whatever <laughs> the right? hell they call it. It's basically a Bigsby. Does it have that one that I have plays it plays better than any other guitar I have? Does it have those That's pegs you have to string it up on? I would I'd I'd have more of these. They're now, really folks, good. take a look at the Theodore by Gibson. Yeah, Tar Jesus. Have you seen it, Crow? The Theodore. Theodore. Have you look up the Theodore by Gibson? And can they want two grand for it. So Would you give your, any? Your audience can see this instead of us. Just I, I don't know how to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm the only person honest. buying that is Trogly. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know if he would buy it. Looks like someone right. took a melody maker and clipped its ears. It's disgusting. It really is. Let me see if I can share uh, this page. I don't think I'm allowed to do a share. I think you have it disabled. Yeah, no, I, I have to do it. Um, I just got to stop all the pop-up windows first. Inspired by an original drawing. Hold on, let me see now. Present. Johnny Kramer's talking about Glenn. I think he's talking about Glenn uh, Fricker talking about. All right, does everyone that. see that? Oof. Oh, comes in yellow. That's fair. Yeah, they're gonna make it in the three standard colors, right? It's like red, yellow, and natural. Yeah, or something it looks like, like a that. fucking tulip. Who Gibson's legendary former president, Theodore, Ted McCarthy. And they named it after this poor bastard. He's dead. Can you give the guy some rest? <laughs> he had a stroke while he was drawing it. Ted, they should it call the, it the dead Ted. The Etzel of guitars. <laughs> it's unbelievably horrible. I'm looking. It's the historic Gibson narrow, tall frets. Let's see what pickups they put in this fucking piece of shit. Who cares? Probably 57s. Oh, they're soap bars, right? Oh, oh. yeah, I think they're soap just, bars. Yeah, Peter. Oh, got my them God. off Timo. <clears throat> Gibson yeah, right. his partnership with Timo. <laughs> That's ugly. Yeah. It's just rotten. Even the Chinese won't copy that. Yeah. Because someone yeah, has right. to want it. <laughs> exactly. That's that. Gibson figured it out. You might be onto something, Krellbach. Gibson figured yeah. out how to make China stop copying <laughs> their guitars, make garbage. We don't copy that. They're horrible. Yeah. Oh, we fix it. We fix it. We make it look like Les Paul. <laughs> what the hell is that thing? They get that one call from that guy that says, Can you make this for me? And they're like, You go now. The one customer. Can I get it in green? Uh, no. That tulip piece of shit? No way. Unbelievable, right? It's it's really disgusting. But <laughs> this is Gibson. It's like if you're going to come out with a new guitar, that's the guitar. Nobody at the company can think of anything to do. Not make a Les Paul with like an, a maple fingerboard, maple neck. Um... Pat Martino headstock. Don't do anything cool or modernize what the Les Paul could be. Just 
take a drawing that Ted McCarty drew with his anus <laughs> and fucking it's you're sitting on the crap. Do, well, do you remember the guitar the the, the one that um Fran used to always show the picture. I think it was uh, who drew that picture of a guitar. Was that Mary? Smart Mary. Oh, geez, I don't know. <laughs> You're reaching way back into the. Do you remember Smart book, Mary? Right? Smart Robin. Smart Robin. That was her name. Yeah. Thank you, Christ. That yeah. Was she was mentally yeah, Jesus. ill, but she drew a picture of a guitar and gave it to Fran. And Franimal had it. it was like a shark guitar. Okay. That makes more sense than the Theodore. <laughs> Smart Robin does better drawings than Ted McCarty. Maybe she's going to take over at Gibson. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> what was the song she used to sing? Oh, dude, I don't know. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Now I'm coming back home. Wait. Oh, man. All right, so Joe, do you have, have to, any lists today? I have, to go to, I have to be in Pittsburgh tomorrow. No, Ooh, that. what's there? Uh, I'm doing an event at In Stuff Music this weekend. Really? You know, In Stuff Music. But, yeah, they're doing, like, a big anniversary deal. So I'm going to do... Rep day sort of thing there. I've never been there before. How long are you there for? Uh, flying in Thursday. I don't land until late. The thing that sucks about Pittsburgh, and you know, people can make their jokes now, but the thing that sucks is there's not really any great direct flights. I have to connect in Chicago. So, like, I'm leaving LA tomorrow at like 11.30 a.m. And I think I land at like 10 at night or something. Right. It's going to be brutal. So it's well, that's because it's a three hour. You gain three hours. But no, I know, I know, but I lose the whole day. So then Friday, I'm going to see a couple of other dealers. Saturday, I'm going to do their event. And then Saturday night, I'm flying home. So huh? I'm literally like hopping on the plane right after I'm done there. And flying now, is it a direct home? home or you got to go back up to Chicago end. first. What's that? Ugh. Is it a direct? Is it direct from no. Pittsburgh or do you have to go to no. Chicago? I have to go to Dallas. So it's like, yeah, it's brutal. It's going to be. A really, really long weekend. <laughs> so, how about Joe? You were going to ask Joe if he's got a list. Joe, you got a list of uh, hardest guitar players to copy their technique? Uh, top top, top of the list, Kurt Cobain. <laughs> I was going to say Best a list guitar of guitars of, that are well, uglier we have than, them. Yeah, ugly than the Theodore. But we had done the 1986 best heavy metal and hard rock albums, but they have every year from the 80s. Ooh. I'd like to hear what 81 has to offer. Well, I just went to 1980. Ooh, Ooh even better. Let's start yeah. with 1980. Okay. Number British 10. Steel. Never heard of it. Tigers of Pantang, Wildcat. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Tigers of Pantang was uh, was that John Sykes John, early? John Sykes. Yeah, John Sykes, and wasn't Carmen Napasi the drummer or PJ? Drummer? Maybe I'll check it out. Coming in at number nine, Saxon Wheels of Steel. Ooh, Saxon. All right. I always thought Saxon stunk. Same here. Yeah, it, it was like uh, leather. That they tried, is like they tried to be Iron Maiden. I mean, you know what? Saxon might be the reason why Rob Halford was under the radar for being gay because Saxon was way gayer. Oh, gosh. They were like... No, they well, all look like your dad trying to be a metal... Denim and leather. Cool. Yeah, denim and leather. It sounds like the scene of a movie Baseball, from 1980 like with old. Al Pacino called Cruisin'. Mm -hmm. Just awful. All right, coming in at number eight, we have Diamond Head Lightning... To the nations, <clears throat> so that's like an influential band on the all the Metallica, Metallica metal bands, from what I understand. I don't know any of their music. Yeah. This well, is hard know, rock or metal, or right? Metal. Hard rock or metal? Okay, not one record so far. I, I would have in my list. Well, the rest of the list after we get another one is going to be something we'd all have. Uh, coming in at number seven, another band I never heard of. It's Angel Witch. That's another one that influenced Metallica. Never heard. 
okay. Thing from. All right, now the top six I think we would all have in our collection. Coming in at number six, Iron Maiden with Iron Maiden, the self-titled debut. Doesn't mm. make my top ten. Doesn't number make five, my top ten I love it. It makes my top ten. Number five, Ozzy with Blizzard of Oz. Okay. Yep. That one makes top sense. three. Okay. Coming in at number four, we have Motorhead, Ace of Spades. No. A right, couple of good at, songs on that album. It's a full album. It's not that great. Right, coming in at number three, we got Judas Priest, British Steel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, number two, ACDC. They are back in black. I know what number one is. Yeah, obviously. Heaven and Hell. And number one is Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell. That makes sense. Okay. Let me just discuss a few that they missed completely. White Snake had an album that year. Called Ready and Willing should be should be it's better than ninety percent of that list. And you would metal? put it over yeah, Angel that's Witch. That's not even close. That's not close to metal though. You would put metal that and hard over rock. Angel Witch and, 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 and the early the early Megadeth was hard hard rock. It, and Wang Dang Sweet came Kung Tang. What are you talking? What are you? What, what? Wait. What are you saying? You think ACDC is back in black is heavy metal? It's far heavier than friggin' White Snake was at the time. I don't think so. I'm not saying they were bad. I'm just saying that they were. I think like they're that. hard rock, and the list says hard rock and heavy metal. It doesn't say heavy metal to Krellbaugh's fucking approval. <laughs> well, my approval. It's a hard rock approval. album, is it not? Is it, all it's the guys? It's a hard deep, rock album. <laughs> I never. Well, uh, also, 1980. Uh, Michael album? Shanker Group. Michael Shanker Group first album. Okay. Effing great. Also, 1980. Animal magnetism, or is that eighty one? So, do you consider Thin Lizzy hard rock? Yes, I would. Okay, yeah. well then, then I then I lump White Snake in with them too. It's like we got different classifications for hard rock then. But I'll tell you right now, the I'm looking you, at you wouldn't think Thin Lizzy. Go listen to Bad Reputation. Tell me that's not a hard yeah, rock. Yeah, that, there's that one. Yeah, but it's like. I can name lots of things. I don't think Fastway was 1980. Program. I think it's later. Much later. Hold on. Am Some I still like coming up with bands from 1980 that should have been on this list? I don't know. When was Def Leppard on through the night? 80 or 81? 81, I believe. Are you sure? High and Dry was 82. That's 81 or 82. Oh, was Okay, you may be Somebody right. Somebody tell me when on through the night is because that's that's definitely better than fucking Angel Witch. Eighty one. High and dry. Uh, high. On through the night's eighty one. I think so. Uh, uh, no, nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty. It's eighty. It is eighty. So okay, because I was going to say, I thought they all came out that the British wave of heavy metal started in eighty, and they mm -hmm. always lump um, Def Leppard in there. Now, are you telling me that Def Leppard album is much harder or any harder than Ready and Willing? No way. That White Snake record's fantastic. All right. Anyways, I think I could come up with 10 albums that were better than that list. Mm -hmm. Okay. 1981. Now, there's going to be anger on this one because the oh. placement is fucking retarded with some of these. Uh, coming in at number 10, we have Fire Down Under by Riot. Riot sucks. Hold on a second. Are we in 81? 1981. Yeah. Riot's terrible. Where are they from? Uh, New York, uh, they were founded in New York in the mid-70s. Oh, wow. Okay. I wonder if Riot is the band that, uh, that Nick from Moontooth plays in on the side. I got to look that up. Okay. Coming I, oh, yeah. Hold nine. on. Women and Children okay. First, 1980. Yeah, true. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Diego, Freedom well, of Choice, one of my favorite heavy metal <laughs> albums. <Yeah. laughs> you, you would put Van Halen ahead of Angel Witch? Exactly. All right. Well, well, Who knew? The, the list is going to get stupider, but right now there's a bit of sanity. Uh, we have at number nine, Def Leppard, High and Dry. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, on what, number 10? 
number nine. Nine. Oh, right. Riot was number ten. That shit bag. Okay, I like on. I like that album. All right. Coming in at number eight, I've never heard of them. Raven, rock until you drop. Okay. There was another. <laughs> Cancelled. They're so Raven. Coming in at Just number like seven. That. At least I know this group and I like the album when it came out. It's Motley Crue, Too Fast for Love. Great the record. That was 81? 81. Great record. God, we're old. All right. Right. And but this is let me just let me just say this one more time. By the way, Queen the Game, nineteen eighty. Um, this is hard rock and heavy metal, or just heavy metal? Hard rock and heavy metal, right, instead, okay. or heavy metal and hard rock, to be more exact. Uh, coming in at number six for those about to rock fire. We salute, we salute you, you. ACDC. Yep, very good. You know, I, I got to really? go back and tell Howie. He 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 liked Snowball. I snowballed. I think it's a great song. I think side one of that album. That album reminds me a oh, lot oh, of. Oh, oh, oh. That album reminds me a lot of another album that might be on this list, which is Judas Priest Point of Entry, where side one is so fucking unbelievable, and side two is just not now, good. Let me let clarify. You said he likes Snowball, or he likes being snowballed. Exactly both. I think. <laughs> Excuse you. Okay, coming in. I like Howie. Coming in at number five, beating out ACDC and Motley Crue and all that. Here we go with sax and denim and leather. <laughs> oh, the oh, gayest. <laughs> the gayest. DL's a big sax. Uh, you know, now I'm going to look for the oh, gayest yeah. albums of the 1980s. My friend Bob was into sax. And I'm going to do a search the gayest albums of 1980s. Oh, all right. Do you know what? Do you, let, me, let, me, oh, let me just explain this. Do you guys ever have this happen to you? You talk to somebody, you say you're into heavy metal, you like Maiden, Priest, and they're like, oh, you got to listen to a bunch of fucking gorillas. They just name a stupid <laughs> oh, band. I hate shit and just like from that. the name of the band, gross. like Angel Witch, you already know you're going to hate it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's don't like, you- this is for people that like heavy metal that don't bathe. <laughs> I know. My reaction always was, would you get the fuck out of here with that shit? All right. Coming in at number four. Ozzy Osbourne, Diary of a Madman. Diary of a Madman. At number four? At number four. That might okay. be my number two. Well, because at number three, everyone else is getting beat out by Venom. Welcome to hell. Oh, oh sure. There you go. How the Again, fuck does this keep band happening? Am I on an alternate Earth? Is Anvil going to be on some this kind of I don't think Venom should beat out Grim Madness. Reaper on a list. And Grim That's Reaper shouldn't be anywhere near this list. <laughs> okay, coming in at number two. Wasn't that Nick's Nick's band, Nick Balcott. Nick yeah. Balcott. Yeah. It's Nick with Sweetwater. Let me play this. Yeah. See, it looks like a fat, ugly. Joe I Elliott. love the number two album, and I yes. love the number one album. But even I will admit they should be flipped, and Diary should probably be first. Mm-hmm. Uh, but coming in at number two, if you listen to Fools, Mob Rules, the Mob Rules, mm-hmm. great album. Good album. It's a hot album to beat that year. But and this included hard rock. And the fact that Billy uh, Squire Don't Say No isn't on this list, mm. I'm appalled. Appalled. <laughs> so what's number one? Number one is Killers, Iron Maiden's second album. Okay. Okay, that's a fantastic album. But, but, but let me just point out a few albums that didn't make the list. Go ahead. Judas Please. Priest, Point of Entry. Where the fuck is it? That should be on this list. Um, I don't know if Motorhead um, Iron Fist is 81 or 82, but I think it's 81. And um, I'm just going to say, without looking, without going too crazy, when did the album uh, Nature of the Beast come out? Is that 82? Probably. I think so. You know who I'm talking about? April Wine? April Wine, yeah. 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 Also, is Rush heavy rock? Because Moving Pictures would be 81? I would Mm. say Rush is hard rock. How are they not number one? They can't be. They must not be counting them as hard rock. Because they're Canadian. They're not counted. 
No, just joking. All I'm right, we got 1983. Also, Triumph in 81 was... was well, what uh, happened in 82? Allied Forces 81? We did Allied 82. Forces, yeah. oh, oh, that's not really hard, though. Didn't we do 82? No, no I mean, uh, 1982 is next. I'm sorry. So I guess they're not yeah. calling Van Halen Fair Warning Hard Rock? Yeah, Fair Warning. Yeah, Fair uh, Warning is 81. I didn't make the list. What about, what about music from the elder? For love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me when you're ready for 1982. Go ahead. Coming in at number 10, Twisted Sister Under the Blade. Bullshit. Anything I, I've never even heard of that one. Okay. I know Come Out and Play. Well, and, and the you, other you one, can't but... kill rock. And, no, yeah, you can't kill rock and roll. So one song off of that. You can't stop rock and roll. You can you call it's called turning it off because Twisted Sisters <laughs> on the radio. Okay, coming in at number nine is Witchfinder General Death Penalty. Oh, I love the name of that band. <laughs> Witchfinder General. Give me a band, Witchfinder. Though. Well, I'm they... the Witchfinder General. Oh, we got <laughs> we went to the top of the fucking heat for this one. <laughs> they make some good doom metal, so I I, I actually listen to them. Um Coming in at number eight, Accept, Restless, and Wild. I yeah. like some songs from Accept. I like their greatest hits the best because. What's your favorite like. Accept song? Fast as a Shark is great. Mine is Midnight Mover. Fucking Except. love that song. Re oh, well, hold on a sec. Also, 81. Wasn't Fire of an Unknown Origin 81? Yep. That, from Blois to Cult. Oh, well. That stinks. Oh, Burning for You? It's better than Venom. I don't know. Bro, what, what are you I, that, a that record later there? Coming that record, I am not a fan. Coming in at number seven, I've never heard of it. It's Tank Filth Hounds of Hades. Ooh, Has anyone ever heard of that? No. The band itself oh, never heard of Hades. Even the album cover is just so bad. It's <laughs> embarrassing. I like how metal went like real satanic right around then. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what oh, yeah. Celtic the PMRC for like start Celtic having. Frost yeah. and uh, yeah, Merciful Fate. Merciful Fate may pop into there somewhere. I forget what yeah they were. Yeah, they all take their uh, names from fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah, <laughs> well, Spirithungal, <laughs> yeah, but Mortar. <clears throat> We are on it all. watch the I'm Netflix band. movie called um, Metal Lords? Oh, no, no, I want to watch that, that though. Oh, oh yes, 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 I did. Kids they, in high they, school? They, yeah. Yeah. They didn't about, like let's it. name the band Sticks, like from that river of hell. Oh, yeah, what kind of songs are they? You know, like, come sail away. Come <laughs> show sail. tunes. Lads. The gayest oh. fucking rock and roll show tunes. Bingham. Yeah. Bingham. You ha yeah. Have you seen uh, Heavy Trip? No. Oh, you Heavy Trip was Heavy much Trip. better. Oh, dude, you've got to watch Heavy yeah. Trip. Heavy it's Trip? actually a foreign film, but it's fucking gold, man. It starts off slow, but it gets better. As uh, it goes yeah. Where He's, do you find it? What is it? Uh, Some Prime, I think. Prime, yeah. I think. yeah. Heavy it's better. Trip? You know why? Because I fought the kid in the Heavy Metal, the, okay. the Lords movie. Uh -huh. That one kid was a douche. The whole uh -huh. movie, he's a douche, and I'm like, I don't like this kid. Yeah. Oh, you mean the one that's the guitar player? Yeah. yeah he's completely unlikable. Yeah. 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 And so it was like, I don't like this guy. So now I don't. It makes the movie unlikable. Well, that was the whole. I point. watched a movie the other day with uh, Jason Statham. You guys like him? It's not really. Yeah, a few movies. The movie's called Safe. It's excellent. Very good action. Ninety well, minutes. It's a safe choice. It's a safe choice. Yeah, you gotta watch, go ahead. You gotta watch Heavy Trip, though. Being... I watched a movie that yep. was so fucking bad. I enjoyed the fuck out of it, and of course, I know you must have heard about how bad it is. Uh, Madam Web. Never heard. I have of not. It. Oh, yeah, oh, it's that's so the it's woman horror. Spider Man. It, it's like it was written. Uh, I, I I I can't the chick explain from, uh, without chick from making Fifty fun Shades of, of Grey playing her. Yeah. The All right, coming in at number six, is. it's Anvil with Metal on Metal. I knew Anvil was going to be Anvil. <laughs> Terrible. That's absurd. Jesus. Lips. I hate that band. Coming in at number five, Scorpions Blackout. Great, Great album. Awesome. That should be higher. Yeah. Agreed. 
Uh, coming in at number four, I think uh, you mentioned this earlier, Dave. It's uh, Motorhead, Iron Fist. Oh, it is 82. Okay, going back to 81 real quick, MSG by Michael Schenker Group could be my number one. Okay, so 82, we just had Iron, uh, the Iron Fist. Love that record. Love that album. Yeah. better. Than, I like that album better than Ace of Spades, even though the Ace of Spades tune might be better than the song Iron Fist. Coming in at number three, Venom, Black Metal. What, they're on this list twice? Three what times the on fuck? DL's a big Venom guy. Uh, coming in at number two, finally, some fucking insanity is uh, restored. It's Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance, one of the greatest mm. albums ever. And we all know what number one is. What? Number of the Beast. Do you, are you are you on the same page? Yes, it is. No, no, no. I, I oh, he's just guessing because it's that, the that, obvious no, choice. Okay. Yeah, it's my, it makes it's my sense. Maiden album, so. But you see, the guitar playing is an Iron Maiden. They're not as tight as the guitar. <laughs> put up. I had to put up with that for fucking decades. They're not as tight as who? Huh? The guys in Maiden. Maiden it's are tight. not as tight as who? The guys in as the guys in Priest. Yeah. Yeah. I had to listen to that for fucking decades, and then someone tw 30 years younger than me came up to me a few years ago started saying that I almost knocked this fucking head off. <laughs> Are they out of their minds? Yeah. I actually read that in a fucking magazine a few years ago. It's like, has it, that been passed on? Yeah, 82. Absurdly. I would consider Asia. Hmm. A hard rock record. Come on. I love time again. You're allowed yeah, to love that's probably the hardest song but... in that album. Uh, yeah, I'm Mikey, not, that album I'm is definitely one of the best singer for 1980. Maybe I should. In fact, the guy who wrote what was the big what was the uh, what's the song that Bingham doesn't like on uh, where's Night Ranger? Screaming for Vengeance. Oh, yeah, Night Ranger should be on this oh. list. Every album, Night Patrol was uh, you give me Dawn Patrol pain, but you uh, give Dawn me pain. Night Patrol's the movie. That one? Yeah. yeah, I think that, that was written by awesome. the guy who also has a song on the new album, songwriter guy. They have a lot of bad songs, they have a lot of great songs too. I like one Pain and bands. Pleasure, it's just stupid. Or you know, uh, so I just got word, United, folks. That, we uh, United, we, we might be we might be deemed racist against black metal. Thank you. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> All right, are, are we ready to journey into 1983? Wait, 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 was that foreshadowing somebody on this list? No, no, I was no, just Venom. saying because no, the last no, said, one, there was an said, album called Black to, Metal. You ready to journey into 1983? Oh. I was like, yeah. Well, they shouldn't be on the list. Okay. No, so no, what, no, I, what I, album I, did Venom come out with at 83? Where is it on I the list? I haven't exactly. looked at the entire list. <laughs> uh, but coming in at number 10, we have Quiet Riot with uh, Metal Health. Ooh. Awful. No. When it first oh, came out, I liked that one song. Metal Metal Health, because it was different for me, but it wore off really quick. You know coming I love in, Slick that's Black that's Cadillac. Cool. Oh, they mentioned the that. They actually God mentioned that song. In this, in that gaps. <laughs> well, that that uh, that song was recycled from the Quiet Riot Two album, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. And you know what, though, the original Quiet Riot when Randy was in the band is like a glam band. Oh, yeah. horrible. Yeah, the song total are glam band. I, I it's bought, like I bought the Japanese imports just because it was Randy, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, they make the suite look incredible. Mm -hmm. I love Sweet, and that's difficult to do. Yeah, no, they Sweet. were not, not good. Yeah, tunes. Got a couple of good tunes, but they're not incredible. But next to Quiet Riot, oh, I, doing I glam. That's funny. Coming in at number nine, it's Suicidal Tendencies with Suicidal Tendencies. No, wow, way. I didn't know they were out that, that early. Oh the, yeah, institutionalized. They, they were a punk band. Was on here, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I would think that, that was right around yeah. Repo Man time. Yep. Okay, uh, coming in at number eight is when they uh, really broke through for Def Leppard, Pyromania. Yep. Good mm -hmm. record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good record. Coming a little bit, seven. a little not as good as the first two albums. It's a little bit more commercially yeah. fooling and uh, too late. Well, you, you know what it is? Too they really, late. yeah, they really took advantage of the videos. 
and MTV with that album. That's why they had several hits. Number seven, Sayer, Slayer, Show No Mercy. Oh, come on. Never. No, they fan. weren't good. Not... They weren't good until 86. All right. Coming in at six, Bark at the Moon by Ozzy Osbourne. Actually, a good album. Moon. I don't know if that's a good album. No, no, that's an album that's got a few good songs. So on it. tired. Four, four or five good songs. Rest Do you of think there's stands. that many? Maybe four. Maybe four. I can't only name a couple songs off. What's the what second else song is on that record? Good on that? Uh, uh, other than more. other than Bark at the Moon, I think I think there's more songs that I like on the Ultimate Sin. Rock and Roll Rebel. So you have Mark at the Moon, uh, Slow Down, see. Waiting for Darkness, Center of Eternity, Cent- Waiting for Darkness. Yeah. You're, You're no different. Waiting for different. Different. Now you so see it, now you don't. Okay. Coming to the top you. five, coming in at number oh. five, except Balls to the Wall. Ooh, that was 83. Udo Dirk Schneider at his Get finest. Balls to the Wall. <clears throat> Look at the midget riding a wrecking ball. <laughs> the fake midget, yeah, the fake midget reading the wrecking ball. Yeah, balls to the wall. I could do without. It's fine. It's not a bad yeah. song. It's just balls to it the doesn't wall. have legs. It's just not a good song. It doesn't have the legs. I mean, it was good for back then when you were hungry for metal, but at this point, it's like I'm full. <sighs> Only the good stuff. Yeah. Coming in at number four is Merciful Fate with Melissa. No. No. I knew it was going to be coming up soon. Never heard anything by them. Okay, number three, Iron Which Maiden, Finder Peace General. of Mind. Peace of Mind is probably the best metal album of the year, although Bingham will argue it's Holy Diver. I don't know if I'll argue that. And Howie would back. argue that. There he is. There he is. There he, to is. Argue there that. he is. Come in, Howie. He, he came just in time. Argue. I don't know what it is, but I disagree completely. It's All right, top so here's 10 the metal and composed. hard rock albums of 1983. At number three is Iron Maiden Peace of Mind. Coming in at number two, Holy Diver. And my question was, which is a better album, Holy Diver or Peace of Mind? Mm. Uh, that's Can you, I love Howie. them equally? Can I love them as both equally, though? Oh, for me, Holy Diver, hands down. Ah, uh, Bingham was right. I knew it, yeah. <laughs> and I have no problem with that opinion either. I think that's... No, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I figured that would be your opinion. But then you said it, that would be... I think Dio is more metal than that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Iron Maiden's Peace of Mind? Yeah. That, their music that... tends to be a little more on the um, uh, progressive side compared it's, to Dio. It's hard for me to say. I think... Both of those records are, are really good, and I like listening to both of them. I would say that song for song, there might be two or three songs on each album that make this like such a toss-up. Because, like, dude, Holy Diver, first of all, of course, is perfection. The song Caught in the Middle, or it's... Mm. Caught in the Middle. Can it's such you a see good, it? Is that... Is, uh, don't song. talk to strangers on that because uh, don't talk to strangers. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's on there. Yeah. 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 It's it's amazing. And then, but then you know, you go to the other side and you got the trooper. It's like, how do you argue with the trooper? The trooper, flight of Icarus, the revelation, where eagles dare, oh, yeah. die with your boots on, to tame a land, still life. I will say every song except for the worst song on that album. Quest for Fire is the only dumpster fire on that album. <laughs> somebody, walk the earth. If somebody can tell me they have an issue with it. I don't know. Sunlight. At a time when dinosaurs roam the earth. It's lame. so gay. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a bit. It's there's like a every much. Iron Maiden song on that album is like an educational song. Here's Flight of Icarus. So we're going to learn some mythology. I'm going to tell you about World War One. We're going to go to Revelations in the Bible, and now let's talk about hit a time when dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> real bad. <laughs> Iron Maiden meets Barney. Yeah, oh, there's. Yeah, I mean, oh, some, have you right? guys hold on before we go on? Have you guys seen the Instagram bit where Barney? Some kid says to Barney, "I can't go to the dance," and With Barney's the talk. They the shoes. Oh. Yeah. Fucking and great. Barney's talking like a gangster. Yeah. 
schwartz if you will for the for Black the uh, jewish i audience. have i have seen anything video. derogatory and what's with those fucking shock socks oh Look at you! Can eat some cakes. You can't be. And he's like, ah, oh, and it's Barney. It's Great. so fucking gold. <laughs> the only, that overdub is. There's another guy. I I always repost him. Um, Milo the cat. You ever seen any of his? He takes the old '80s cartoons and he syncs them to rap. No. Oh, you must have seen some in my my stories, but. Okay, coming in at number one, the album is not as good as number two, not as good as number three. Uh, Kill Em All, Metallica. Fuck off with Metallica being number one. Give me a Please, break. This was 83? 83. Yeah. Please tell me both Headhunter by Crocus and the first Oh, Crocus. Yeah, Headhunter. Oh, my no. God. What I mean, was the second first, one, Howie? Yeah. The, the Crocus is Headhunter and the first Fast Way album better have been on this list. No. Nope. Yeah. No. No. It's ridiculous. Definitely behind I agree. the uh, crocus. That's one. Of and also, favorites. was it April Wine, Nature of the Beast, eighty three, or is it eighty two? I think it's eighty two. It's a good record. I, only say I love that all of the town. Because I remember when that came out. I don't think I was out of high school. Are what we about ready? Us? Was Alcatraz is no eighty one? No, eighty one. No, it should have been. That should have been number. No, top you got to remember these lists are made by fucktards. Yeah, Venom was on the list, though. Oh, Merciful Vate was there. Venom. Venom was on three or four times. <sighs> Witchfinder General. Which Man, Finder listen, General? Which, Finder General which you could only good. buy if you sent in a box top and sent it to the back <laughs> of Cherry Lane Magazine to get that. Witchfinder General. Oh. Which Finder that's, General? That's... Is that the one that you go to to save some time? I, I don't, well, it's the general of the Witchfinder. the general. Nobody gets it? I get it. <laughs> Let's let's enter into 1984. And no, actually, 1984 is nowhere on this list. And I, I do consider Van Halen hard rock. Uh, starting at number ten, Man of War, Hail to England. If they're if 1984 is not on this list, they're clearly not considering Van Halen hard rock metal. It's being considered uh, something else. I don't know. Yeah. Pop. No. Coming but in another Man of War was terrible. Does that count for anything? <laughs> they were horrible. <laughs> I agree with you. I like how you said, uh, does that count for anything? <laughs> coming in at number nine, we have Bathory with Bathory. Bathhouse? So, this is bands that sold four units. Well, Bathory's like early black metal stuff, right? I don't know. I mean, which we've already judging determined by the album cover, it looks black black like it. But at right, least we are racist against eight, black metal. One of the greatest albums ever is Dio, The Last in Line. That's an amazing record. Always. You know, I've never heard that record before. I'm just kidding. You're what? Full Coming in shit. at seven, I'm another full. great album. Shove. It is Love at First Sting, The Scorpions. <laughs> great record. Except for I was going to say, Bingham comes out of the shower every time, singing The Chains Are This is great. The I love this album. <laughs> I love this album, but there's no way this album goes ahead of Dio and the Scorpions. Oh, it's Wasp with Wasp. The chains are and we'll fuck like a beast. Fuck the like a wasp, beast. Wasp Wasp album is that Love Somebody album? Yes, this be is somebody. The, uh, it has Love Machine. I want to be somebody. Oh, be, be somebody. Yeah. yeah. Be. I want to be somebody. Be somebody. My favorite, I think my favorite song by them, I mean, besides Fuck Like a Beast, is uh, Blind in Texas. I just, it's just a ball. Blind out in Texas was on the next one, Last Command, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coming in at number brother, five, uh, Dave's favorite, it is Celtic Frost with Morbid <laughs> Tales. <laughs> yeah, I only know Celtic best. Frost because they were always in the back of the magazine, and I was like a young. Like I was into metal, and I'm like, do I want to buy a Celtic Frost album? No, no. no. See, when I when I, 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 I you guys, when I saw it in the magazines, I could have sworn it was Celtic Frost. It's not the Boston Celtics that play basketball. So why is it not Celtic Frost? Well, I think because it's the Celtics proper pronunciation is Celtic, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, up here in Boston, the, we pronounce the it Irish right. pronunciation, not the yeah. Boston moron pronunciation. We can't <laughs> pronounce anything correctly. But let me just say this. Um, besides Celtic Frost being awful, have you guys ever heard of Gorgoroth? Yes. Yeah. 
That is, I mean, that is the best of black metal. And all you have to hear is one song called Incipit Satan or Inciting Satan. That's all you have to hear. After that, you're done. One song and you're out. Nobody, <laughs> nobody beats that band Mayhem for what that, what that guitar player did when his singer blew his brains out. I mean, yeah, yeah. that is the most black metal thing ever. And what, what band? Happened? Wait, what is this? Mayhem. You guys never saw the movie? Macaulay Culkin's brother plays the guy in the movie. The, the huh? Oh, Mayhem. May the yeah. was suicidal. He, he, he Euronymous. placed his arms up. He was. Started slicing his arms up and then at the end of it blew his brains out. So it was just a bloodbath. And the guitar player was the first guy to find him and that whole mess. And the first thing he did was he went and got a camera. You know, there's no cell phone, so it's not like you had one in your pocket. Right. And got a camera, took a picture of it, and made it a record cover later on. There's one of their album covers. <laughs> the, yeah, the well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I believe it was in... I'm not what? sure if it was in the movie, but I think a rival band uh, ate the guy's brains afterwards, too. Well, in the movie, they were wearing a piece of his brain as a necklace, which I think they did. But, who, you know, who knows how much of it got I remember here. when that story broke. So, wait, did he kill himself on stage or just in a No, room? in his room at home. Oh, okay. So the guitar, they were all living in, a like, a band house. The whole band was living together. Right. And the guitar player was the first guy home to find him ah. and saw the scene. And a friend of mine who played in a very famous – uh, death metal band, not a black metal band, but a death metal band. Uh, he had that record, so I I saw the cover of that record years ago, and just wow. it's so creepy when you're holding it. It's just oh, yeah. now they run commercials in Massachusetts where it's like it's okay to not be okay. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, it is. Hey, Howie, what's the name of that movie? Um, you know what? I just saw it the other day. It's on Hulu right now. It is called. Son of a bitch. <laughs> home Alone. Of a bitch. Yeah, right, Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin. Um, so <laughs> coming, I think the singer for Gorgoroth is in prison for murder and torture. No, I think you're thinking of another band. The, the singer called, for Gorgoroth is Gal, G-A-A-H-L. Isn't Gal, didn't Gal go to prison? No. It's called uh, Lords of Chaos. Hold on. Lords of Chaos? Lords of Chaos. Oh, he's a painter. Uh, there's, there's a, there's a video know. from 2019. Gall talked being gay in the black metal scene. Oh, Ooh. he's gay? He was, more, he was murdered shortly that? after that. Coming in at number four. Hold on. Here, he, here they are touring with Priest. Um, let me just see. <laughs> you know. oh, was, it, was there a guy before Gall? You're thinking of, I know what you're thinking of. It's another metal band. It's another black. No, I metal think it's band. his. I he joined them in 98. So let me see if it was the original singer. He joined the new originals. <laughs> All right, moving along. Okay, where were you, Joe? Give me a second. It's okay to not be okay. And then they said, do you guys see these commercials and they have these things I where it's like... I think you're thinking of Vic Kearns, uh, who stabbed Euronymous to death in his apartment. Uh, are they Norwegian? It was, some, it was on some oh, Norwegian... Oh, they're all fucking Norwegian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> these people yeah. are miserable. But the um, these commercials, <laughs> it's like, if, you're, if you have depression, try taking... And they give you some name of a drug. And at the end of the commercial, they say, side effects could be depression... Suicidal thoughts. I'm like, what? Isn't that what they're taking this for? What the fuck are you doing to me? <laughs> All right. That's coming really in at number funny. four, Defenders of the Faith, Judas Priest. Some heads are going to roll. I do like that song. It's probably one of my favorite Judas Priest yeah. songs, but the rest yeah, of the Yeah, I record. think the Sentinel on that album is another Sentinel good one. Sentinel is good. Heads are going to roll. Free Wheel Burning is a little... Yeah. You got the uh, Love Bites, Rock Hard, Ride Free, and Jawbreaker. Yeah, Neil Banbury likes kick axe vices. Vices oh. is great. Heavy metal shuffle. Here they are Heavy back metal. at number three. No, it's not Venom. It's Merciful Fate. Don't break the oath. And they're just they're so giving mafia I advice. Love, I love King Diamond solo stuff. Love it. But the Merciful Fate stuff is just so boring to me huh so boring 
All right. Number it should number be called two, merciless fate. I love number two and number one, but um, but they need to be flipped. But number number two, tell me why I have to be a power slave. I don't want to die. Ooh. I'm a god. Why can't I live on? It is okay, I I reckon, power slave. You know what's funny is I like peace of mind better. I think power slave is a flawless record. Oh, it's got so many great fucking songs. Nah, there's like Back three in tracks the in a row that sound exactly the same on that record. I love oh, the record too, but there's it. like three in a row. Like it's just like, ugh. Like it's Alex the three long songs. Eight. I'm the Let ancient me mariner. Wait, Power the, slave. I, what is that? John, Back in the village. The long distance runner. Are you saying oh, that's that a different the band? Album. Oh, it is. What is that? Gallop on every that's song somewhere in time. sounds the same. Somewhere in time. All right, yeah, somewhere on. in time has the loneliness of a long distance. Yeah, runner. Joe, you're not wrong. I get exactly where you're going. <laughs> I, I'm seeing a I'm seeing a message in the chat from Quaker Oats guy. No, that that, that that Chicago the band Mayhem was from Norway. They're not from Chicago. That's a diff, that must have been a different band. Coming in at number one, Metallica Ride the Lightning. Okay, that great is album. Where the hell is Where the hell is out of the cellar? Ingve, Ingve's hey, yeah. first album. Hey, uh, hey Dave, Ride slide the lightning. It in the slide it in would be my number one that year. Ride the lightning is my favorite Metallica record. You talk too much. Yeah. You're always saying what's on your mind. Ooh. I'll tell you right now. Vocally, he doesn't have a better album. I can understand if you like different albums, but his vocals are so perfect on that album. His voice is strong. It's better than it's ever been. Perfect Strangers also came out in 84. <laughs> that doesn't make my list. Great fucking, I thought that was 85. No, that was... Other uh, than, other than Blue the song Perfect Strangers and... What is it? Something about a back door? What's that song? Knock, knocking knocking on, on, your on your back, back door. door. Really great yeah. fucking I can't think of any other songs on that record. I've listened to it a few times. Oh, it's in great. Rock, we got it's, it's 1025. Do we end with 1985 or do we save it? No, because 1985 is a shit show. There's only two albums on here. <laughs> well, three, one, two. Howie, did you know that M. Emmett own. Walsh died? Who? M. Emmett Walsh, the actor. Which one is he? I thought he so, died a long time ago. Did you ever see Back to School with Rodney? Long time ago, <sighs> he was the swim. He was the swim coach. He was always a he's character actor. He's Doctor Jellyfinger and Fletch. He's uh, yeah. He's the the uh, boss of oh, uh, Harrison. Yeah, I know this guy. He's been in a ton of stuff. He's the psycho oh, yeah. and the jerk. Well, he yeah, eighty eight. Jesus. Oh yeah, he was eighty eight years old. Yeah, when eighty oh, three days shy of eighty nine. When did he die? When did he yesterday? Die? Yesterday, really? I thought he wow. died a while ago. For the for yeah. the hockey fans, Chris Simon died yesterday. I don't know if any of you guys remember him. At yeah, all. I remember Chris Simon. I got his rookie card somewhere. He Chris apparently Simon. Yeah. Any yeah, relation? He played, for, he played for like four or five teams. I remember him playing with Washington, but I think he played for Pittsburgh. He won a cup with somebody, maybe Pittsburgh. But yeah, but wasn't he, yeah, he playing in like the nineties? Yeah, he was a, like an enforcer, a pretty tough dude, and I think he, he started with Quebec. That must be a, that must be yeah, like a legitimately hard role in life because all those guys end up messed up. Like, how no, he had that, that? He must that, been fifty that, years old. That CET thing from too many concussions. He killed himself because he was mm, yeah. gone from con concussions. Howie Hugh yeah. Caldwell says the lead singer dead from mayhem used to bury his stage clothes with animal organs, then dig them up later to wear at gigs. Yeah, I, I do that sometimes. What's wrong with that? Well, that's what. He, so the the lead singer's name was dead. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't uh, use their uh, put their clothes in with the animal carcass? Bury it in the backyard and then wear it later. Well, isn't that part of your all meat diet? They tell you to do that. It is. So you, you have to wear the clothes too. <laughs> yeah. I'm ensconced in leather. Yeah, it was right. Chris Simon was with Quebec Nordiques, and he was with them for one years with the Avalanche before going with the Capitals. The other thing is, you ever see these commercial where the Asian guy is like wrestling a girl and she gets close to his feet and she's like, "Ah, oh, no," because he stinks. And the guy's like, try Old Spice. Yeah, put this fucking perfume on your fucking stinky feet so your feet can stink of bad feet and perfume. <laughs> Don't get in the fucking shower with a fucking scouring pad, you scumbag. 
<laughs> you always got to carry some for the girls with daddy issues. Stop eating all that ginger and get rid of that fuck old. Try old spice on your feet. Uh, yeah. Or get in the shower. You're a filthy pig. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, speaking of filthy pigs, uh, coming in at number 10 for the 1985 <laughs> uh, top metal and hard rock. This, this 1985 is a shit show. I'm telling you right now. Uh, creator, endless pain. That's creator Ooh. with a K. Uh, we, we are aware. We are aware. Okay. Creator was a band when I used to go to Strawberries. I'd be like, "Oh, look at that! I'll never buy that album." They just it with a K. <laughs> I remember having a, a a Kerrang magazine from back then, and there was like a review. Creator had a record come out, and some band called Whiplash had a record come out at the and they were both in the review. And there was a picture of each band, and the caption under one said "Creator" or "Is it Whiplash." And the other one said, Whiplash, or is it Creator? Like, oh, God. They, <laughs> they didn't fucking it just know. just summed up all that Who shit. Knows? Coming in at number nine, Possessed, Seven Churches. Oh, who doesn't love a good Possessed album? <laughs> <laughs> Coming in at number uh, eight. Now, here's, here's I can relate when you say you would see the ad. In the in the magazine, I remember always seeing an ad for this band. It's SOD, speak English or die. Stormtroopers of okay. Die. Stormtroopers yeah. of Death, yeah. That, that was, was the band uh, called like Sirith Ungal? Yeah, there was a <laughs> that was in the back that. of the magazines, right? And yeah. people used to anytime someone would tell me what what do you listen to, I would always throw that band in, even though I never heard them ever, because I just think the name is the name is so absurd. It'd be like Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Sirith Ungal. You know the usual. Well, Sirith SOD all, wasn't all. that wasn't that uh, Anthrax wasn't yeah, that Scotty? I thought uh, M O or was M O D M O D Method of Destruction. Yeah, I always get those two confused. No, Scott Ian was the um, S O D. They had a they had an ode to Jimi Hendrix on one of those records. It was nine seconds long, and it was the intro of um, Purple Haze. It went bam 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 bam. You're dead. And that's the end of the song. Yeah, I remember that. And hey, you remember, Alex, what's that fucking noise? Alex, what's that fucking noise? Coming in at number seven, it's Pentagram with Pentagram. Ah, oh, the wonderful Pentagram. <laughs> I wonder why the PMRC was formed. Like listening to like this natural progression of like all this more and more. They didn't even, they didn't even go after that. They went after John Denver, John. They was telling John Denver that Rocky Mountain High was promoting drug use. How many major seven chords do you think are on that album? <laughs> Which one? The Possessed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was the... Hilarious. Uh, my guess would be yeah. zero. Yeah. Finally, an yeah. album I own. I don't think they have a third on the album. Forget about a major yeah. seven. <laughs> Coming in at number six, except Metal Heart. It's very that popular. had Midnight Mover. Unfortunately, that's the most melodic record so far on this list. Number five is a good album. We have one good album on the fucking list. It's Megadeth. Killing is my business, and business is good. It's good. Mm. I like that because it, it was it was a little sloppy, but I liked it. It's raw. It. I'm yeah. still waiting still for good. a good record to be stated. Coming in yeah. at number four, No Way Beats Out 5, is Slayer Hell Awaits. Yeah, they were still bad. They right. weren't good until the next record. <laughs> when you were listening to that album, you were like, "Hell, take me now." Yeah, I've had wait. enough. Let's speed. Yeah, speed. Yeah, what's really man. funny is if you listen to "Show No Mercy," there's so much Maiden influence in it. it doesn't sound anything like Slayer. But hold on to your balls, hold on to your pants, because coming in at number three is whether you say it's Celtic or Celtic, it's Celtic Celtic <laughs> Frost to Megatherion. This is just ultra heavy stuff. There's no hard rock here. I don't even know that this is heavy because if you go back and listen to some of these records, they were just bad. They're yeah. bad. Very fucking bad. But there, nothing else existed at the time like that. So it seemed. Yeah, but. But this is a time where you'd see the album artwork and you knew you were in for shit. Okay, coming in at number two Exodus, Bonded by Blood. Terrible. But let me just go back to 81 for a second and say, would Journey Escape be considered a hard rock record? No. 
No. Hard I, rock. I think Rick Emmett would agree that it's hard rock. <laughs> yeah, but Rick Emmett, Rick Emmett can't do himself hard Rick rock. Rick Emmett too. said he never saw Triumph as a, a hard rock, well, a metal band. He always saw them as more like hard rock, like Foreigner and Journey. And I was like watching the interview going, going yeah, and those guys had good singers, though. <laughs> I had how we go with it. I like Rick Emmett's voice. It's all right. It's just you're not gonna. You know, there's a difference when you hear Steve Perry singing uh, "Who's Crying Now" and you hear "Something's on the Edge of Your Mind." You're not sure what it is. His voice was, you know, bordering Getty Lee. Uh, no, it there. wasn't. <laughs> No, no. Glasgow soccer team Celtic are of Irish descent, and they pronounce it Celtic. Oh, really? Well, I guess then we're. But where the fuck Scottish. did this Celtic come from? Well, the Scottish. Hey, you <laughs> called. How about? you doing? I seen him if it's not Scottish. It's I, are you sure? Because it's about thirty degrees Celsius in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Celsius. <laughs> That's awful. And finally, hopefully, to, to wrap us up. Coming in at number one, another one I owned. It's Anthrax, Spreading the Disease. That's number one? Yeah. So not a song in that album. Is, that, yeah. is it Madhouse? What's Madhouse is Madhouse was great. The video no, was great. Is on it's there. a Madhouse. No, 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 no. Yeah, that, what else is on there? There's another. The uh, best. Aftershock, you got Gung Ho. Armed and Dangerous. Uh, that, that's it. Armed and, armed and Dangerous. That's the best song on that record. I got major problems with that 1985 list. That 85 okay, so was fucked. 85. Where's, where's marching man, out? Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Where's invasion of your privacy? That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, rat. Rat wasn't on before. These or, are none uh, of these um, are none of these are melodic hard rock. So in uh, 84, back 84. then we called it heavy metal, but people don't call it had this kind that kind of music heavy mm. metal anymore. Was it 84 or 83? Um, docking under lock and key. Not under lock and key. 85 uh, was under lock and key. Nail. Mm. Tooth and nail before. They mm. missed that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably the best docking album, in my opinion. What was 85 for? Uh, was What year was Midnight Madness by uh, Night Ranger? Ooh, that was 83. 84? I 83, I want to say. I thought 83 was Dawn Patrol. 82 was Midnight Madness. Uh, oh, I just typed all of the movie. So, uh, according to the intro net, it's 83. 83. October 83. Yeah. Really? Gone so, what was 85 was from them? Was it uh, Sentimental Street? Oh, geez. For, what was the name of that album? Uh, Seven Wishes. Yeah, Seven Wishes. That's a good album, too, though. Are you lumping sentimental street in with hard rock no but that so album had uh seven wishes street. uh you guys want a headbang tonight want to get some beers go listen to some rock so you, you want to listen to some... out on sentimental street <laughs> uh, <laughs> sister christian that other album that's like that's, that's like the beginning of that toto video that i always make fun of let's do it let's do it they climb oh, up right. on the roof. Some right. Oh no, uh, I'll be over. Yeah. Some <laughs> people live their dream. It's like what? Right. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Come on. They get up there and it's like <laughs> I'll slip up for a ballad. <laughs> Some people live their dreams. <laughs> and then those there and all of a sudden out of nowhere, I'm like I'm tall. There was a time. I love this good band do that. They get all low. They get all hyped up for uh, ballad stuff at the end, but they should just throw down the mic and go Pow! walk off stage. So funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, it's oh, great. Man. You love that video, by the way. You love Michael McDonald appearing in all kinds of videos. I I have to, I have to get going. I have Michael. Go to bed. Which is eighty six is when he's shit been out there longer real. than he should be by himself. Watching yeah, we'll, Godzilla we'll pick it up on eighty six next week. I think we did we'll 86 pick, last week. We did 86. We'll we'll re we'll we'll yeah, yeah we got to revisit it. I don't remember just anything. Just revisit it. Just to piss us off. You know what you off. should do is everyone should say that what's their top 10s 
for every year and see how different it is than these lists because I don't think one I don't think That's one of those idea. B bands would ever be in there. Oh, and another, another one for eighty five that they didn't put is Thunder in the East, which is one of the best sounding records from that. Loudness, crazy man. Yeah, oh, produced, yeah, produced by the Max Norman. List. The sound uh, every night when I'm on my Spotify. Rock and roll crazy night. Oh, really? <laughs> Akira, roundness. Yeah. All right. We're so we'll talk canceled. about that next week. I want to thank everyone for go. being here, Howie. Even though you're a little late, it's fine. Good to see you, as always. Here we... And uh, let's see, Matt, you're falling asleep. Good night. Thank yeah. you. Krelba, have a good night. Joe, John, and uh, everyone have a great night. We'll see you here Bye, next everybody. week. Same bat time. Bye, John. Same bat channel. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everyone, including Very Molly. good. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Ba -na 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 -na. Yeah.